What's up, honey love? What's up, girl? What's up, love, honey love? I see you. What you doing, real Sonia? What's up, Sonia? Fat fat mama Sonia. What's up, fat fat mama Sonia? What's up, fat fat mama Sonia? What's up, Mayday? Lord Mayday. What's up, boy? What's up, Lord Mayday? What's up, my boy Doc? What's say, Doc? Hmm? What's say, Doc? What you say, Doc? It's my big boy, Doc. What you say? All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, y'all, to another week, another episode of Game Dog Talk. Salute to the chat. Uh, we got we back in the building with the legendary schoolboy, Mr. Richard Garcia and Ram. What's up, y'all? How you doing? What Chuck up, Chuck. everybody in the chat? Salute, man. I ain't on YouTube, so I can't just shout everybody back out in the chat, but, you know, I fucks with y'all. Salute. Yeah, let me roll up and see who got, who got in the building. Quick little roll call. Uh, what's that? Taki, salute. Aladdin Saddam in the building. Uh, City Boy Kennel, salute. Uh, Game Dog Caribbean, what it do? AJ, Bert in the building. Uh, Dogman RT, salute. Uh, Miami Snoopy 305 in the building. CD Sean, Mike Lee, let's see, Ty Green, uh, Vernon Stone. Got uh, A.R. Nixon, uh, Gullery Kennels, Slim Miller, uh, Sim Miller, my bad. Then we got uh, Dan, G, Dan G, DBK Ken, uh, Bulldogs. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfamiliar. Uh, Mr. JW 20 Texas, 704 Troy. Boss Dog Kennel, Stephen Lamontez Hawkins. Let's see, Bank Statement Kennels. What's up, man? Von C. AJ. Phenomenal Mexican. Salute. Uh, what we got up in here? Black Ice. Live Life Real. What's up, bro? Uh, word First. Oh wait, Wordless. My bad. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Carlos George, I am Legend Boxing, T2 Dog, salute, salute to everybody in the building, smash that like button, ladies and gentlemen, get the likes up, all right, what you been up to, Mr. Garcia? Same old, same old, I got the, I got the grandkids over, you was talking about a nap earlier, I was taking a nap too, they woke me up, but it's all good, I, yeah. I'll, I'll get, I'll get to sleep plenty when I die, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, that's a good thing. You know, what I love about my grandson is uh, when he see me, he equate me with snacks now. So okay. whenever he, whenever he see me, he 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 got his hand out looking for fruit snacks and shit, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I always get him a box of fruit snacks just for him. He can take home yeah. with him and shit. Yeah. So whenever he see me, like fruit snacks, grandpa, fruit snacks. I'm like, yeah, let's go get some. Yeah, yeah. The girls they don't like to leave the grandkids with me because I don't say no. I right, want right. this. Get it. Yeah, get it. Get this. Can I have this? Hell yeah. Go get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Whatever right. you want. <laughs> Come home. They won't eat dinner because they have four ice creams in them and a right. glass of milk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with it, Rab? What you been up to, bro? Oh, man. Cooling. Shit. I fought with them fruit snacks, too, man. The fruit man. snacks be motherfucking the lick. <laughs> yeah. 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 I eat like half a box of them hoes by myself, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they only give you like six of them in there. You know, I'm 232. I need yeah. about you know, 18 of them holes. Man, you got you to gotta open up like me. What I do is I take like four or five packs, open them shits up, and then pour all of them in like a little ass cereal bowl and, be, and sit in front of the couch and fuck them up, man. That's fruit comedy. Snacks. Yeah. Hey, fruit snacks, good in a bit. Yeah. Just, just, you just can't let your wife catch you eating them kids' snacks and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just start getting my own box. <laughs> mm -hmm. You just put them holes up so I can smack them back. Hell yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, we got a good show today. Got some, some topics coming through from uh from the uh, uh questions y'all put out earlier this week here. Let's see what y'all got here. First question was how to properly introduce uh water to, to pups. You know, um uh, 
So I'm assuming he's talking about drinking water. I think that's what he's talking about. Or, is he, or do, you do you all think he's talking about as far as swimming or something? I would guess. Uh, I would hope he was talking about, you know, uh, giving them water, or swimming, you know. Get a kiddie pool. It's that simple, you know. Same shit you would do for your baby, do for the dog, but just for water. Like, you know, when I started seeing the mom getting irritated with feeding them and I started taking her out more, I just put water in there. Either you're going to drink it or you're not, you know, and they, they start drinking it. Simple as that. There ain't no mythical nothing you got to do. A dog is smart. Shit, he thirsty. And he know ain't no milk coming. You don't drink that water. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What's up, Thompson? Hello. Thompson. Just don't give them no old dirty ass, you know, water hose water. If you got bad water, you know, spend the money and go get some water out the goddamn machine for the dog. You know, if your water fucked up, if you won't drink it, don't give it to the dog, you know, and expect to have a hero dog at the end of the day. The shit don't work like that, bro. Yeah. I mean, if it's a puppy, especially you want to get like, the, uh, you want to get that like that. Uh, I used to get my puppies the same shit that, uh, uh, the water that you get babies and shit, you know what I'm saying? That purified shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I that get, shit only like a dollar at Walmart, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's like a dollar, bro. You get that shit, and then, like you said, what I would do is uh once when they get about three weeks old, and I can see the mama start getting some distance from them, and I see they got some teeth, I start introducing them into food, and I'll just i make my own little milk concoction, and then I'll uh, take some kibble, the puppy food. And kind of like you know, you know, chop it down a little bit, soften it up for them, and put it in there with the milk, make like a little mush for them, and get them used to eating that shit. And then after they eat that shit, they're gonna be thirsty. They're gonna be thirsty as fuck. All that salt they come in that shit, and they're gonna you put some water down there. They're gonna, one of them gonna go explore, sniff that shit, get it up his nose, gonna start licking it. The other one's gonna follow suit. I ain't never had no puppy that didn't like water. What about you, Mister Garcia? Yeah, same thing. You know they they. Uh... You put it in there, they'll, they'll generally they'll just start drinking it, like everybody said. You know, they get thirsty. If not, just shove their face in there. They'll drink it. Once they right. see what it is, stick their mouth in there, you know, and they'll start lapping it up, you know. But, yeah, you filter it. it you know, Ryan made a good point. If the water ain't – like our water here used to be good water, man. My, my relatives used to come from out of town and call it Madeira water. That's where I live, Madeira. And they'd take gallons of it home, you know. But yeah. it's not that way no more, so we filter everything. If I had right. dogs, I'd give them the filtered water, same thing. Right, right. Yeah. Thompson, what's up, bro? Can you hear me? Thompson, I have to delay. Let me see here. All right, well, uh, let's go to, uh, yeah, so I think we took care of the water, the water situation. That was pretty easy. Yeah, you just put it down there. You ain't got to sit there and watch them. Wait for them to drink it. They'll drink it, dude. If you feeding them food and shit, they're gonna they eat that kibble. They're gonna get thirsty and they're gonna naturally explore the water. And, and you know, it's it's impossible. Your dog is not gonna die of uh, thirst and shit. Impossible. Ain't gonna happen. You see, uh, how does the panel feel <laughs> about Red Boy Dog? Okay, Red Boy Dog. You get a lot of questions about Red Boy Dog. Uh, uh, let me start with you, Mr. Garcia. What's your uh, thought? What's your experience and what's your thoughts on Red Boy Dog? Well, the first thing that comes to everybody's mind is gameness. You know, that's what that's like their forte. You know, the current ones, I don't know, but the ones I liked were uh, bred down off of Brandy Girl. She was the key. Most of the good Red Boy dogs come down off of her. If there was still some of it around, that's what I would be looking for. Good dogs bred down off of Brandy Girl. All, all of them, you know, Hunter Red, Deacon, Bingo, Peaches, uh, uh, what's that champion, uh, Britches, you know, Venus. They all, they all off of Brandy Girl. And uh, the other ones, you know, the Yellow John stuff, they bred similar. It's, it's similar to Brandy Girl. It's, it's her sister or something like that, you know. They all got mm -hmm. Leo in them. You know, as a cross, you know. But the ones I liked the best were Brandy Girl. That's what I'd be looking for. Okay, okay. What's your thing, Ram? Uh, I got to totally agree with Mr. Garcia on that. And uh, the stuff that I've seen, you know, in the past that best represented the Brandy Girl traits was stuff down from Haymaker. 
You know, them dogs is real good all around red boy dogs, man. You know, a uh, lot of punch, a lot of stamina, you know, good size on them, nice bone structure, hard teeth. It's like the shit you don't see in a boomer dog, those haymaker dogs had, you know. So shit down from that, if you can find it, you know, and you're interested in it, you know, look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, Thompson, you there, bro? Thompson might have some, he might have an issue with his uh, connection or something. There you go. Yeah, I'm here, bro. Okay, bro, what's your thoughts on the Red Boys? Well, shit. Those dog, whoever had offspring off of him was real successful. So, you talking talking about Cottenham's and Medellin's, the Marlowe's, the Bailey stuff. It's a lot of people directly connected to offspring off of that dog that were highly successful that also had dogs that produced at a high level as well. You, you know, when I think of Red Bull, I think of production, really. Consistent production is probably one of the most consistent lines around as far as you think about how many dogs they are. Because I always, me and my partners always argue, I think if we just tallied up all the dogs in the country, it'd be more dogs with Red Boy, heavy Red Boy, Red Boy Jocko dogs than any other. I mean, the percentage wise is high on them. And you got good ones and you got bad ones. But for the most part, if you get into some good strands, man, it's very consistent. Indeed, yes, indeed. Uh, somebody had a question for you in the chat, Ram. Uh, let me go back up here and get it. Yeah. Uh, what up, Bert? What up, Doug? Salute, Bank Statement, cuz oh. Shit, uh, hit me after the show, man. We'll chop one up if you want to go live. You ain't just been hella busy lately. But go ahead. Uh, you find a all question? Right. Yes, all right. Uh, all right, Dixon, Nixon had a question for you, Ram. He says, Ram, I have a question, but anybody else's opinion is welcome. He said, Mims, Bullet, Eli Pup, I'm thinking about getting it. I guess he wants your thoughts on it. Well, you know, uh, like I always say, you know, uh, why was the dog bred? Who bred him? And is the motherfucker who bred him using the stock that he bred, you know? If all those boxes are checked, then go with it. And that's with any dog bred anyway. I was just talking to one of the good brothers earlier. You know, I had a whole lot of different dogs from different bloodlines. So just be with me being doing that, I got to see that it's good in every bloodline. You just got to find it. And if all of those boxes that I just mentioned check off, it's worth giving it a shot, you know. And again, all dogs throw curves. You might get a curve pup or you might get your best dog, you know. You got a better chance of getting your best dog if all the boxes is checked off. You know, he bred it because he's trying to do this with it. The parents is great, you know, and they siblings and other offspring when bred was good dogs, you know. It sound like a lot of a tough feet, but it's people out there who's sticking to that script. And they'll sell you a dog like that under those merits and attributes. And then, you know, the rest is up to you. Yes, indeed. Right. Let's get here to this one here. Um, Ram, this is your question, man. Snap mills, you want to build on that? How to use uh, snap mills? Yeah, I was talking to one of the young homies earlier this week, and he was, you know, asking me, and I was telling him, was you want to get his heart rate up, you know, fast as possible, <laughs> and when you break stride, just take him off. So he didn't get what I was saying, and I went to show him, and he agreed that, you know, this type of conditioning ain't for him. You know, he's going to do something else. You know, but that's just how I use the slap meal. And to me, that's the, the most proper way, you know, get that heart rate up. It might only take the first couple of tries. He might only do it for 10 seconds and it take 10 minutes to cool him off. And we touched on this last week. You, by the end of his conditioning program, it's going to be reversed. He's going to be able to go, you know, maximum stamina, maximum endurance for 10 minutes. And it's only going to take him a minute to cool back off, you know. And that shit, it sounds easy, but it's a lot of tedious work. And it's fucking, it's frustrating, especially if the dog only want to charge on it for five seconds. But it's taking them ten minutes to recover from that shit, man. You know, just got a lot of fat and shit around his heart and all that shit. 
But the more you work at it, you know, the more it's going to get off. And a lot of people ask me that, too. So figured I'd just bring it up the proper way for me, how I use it. Not saying it's the end all be all, but the results, you know, they speak for themselves when you go back and reflect on, you know, my record. <laughs> when did the right way, you know, you top shelf conditioning, doing it like that. And like I say, it's tedious and it'll get hard on you, but it's fucking well worth it. You know, you just try it out. If it ain't for you, fine. You just be honest with yourself because that shit is fucking a bitch, you know. And you don't want to overwork your shit or underwork them because you tried to slack off on doing this type of high-level conditioning. You know, that was my whole build on that. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Garcia, what's your thoughts on uh, the use of a slap mill? Well, it's a, you know, it's a free turn, turning wheel, mill. If, uh, you know, if you get a dog to run it good, you can even bait them to run it good, you know. But it's that, that same thing, get get their heart rate up. And then, you know, when they when it slows down, you can take them off. Some, some will just trot it, you know. And that, that's good for endurance. But, you know, trotting it or, or even walking it or whatever, that, that's not going to get their heart rate up. It's, it has other uses too, but for me, it was a, it was a, you know, a, a fast work type of, type of conditioning, you know, and uh, in the past, if you want to know how to fuck a dog up on a mill, come to me and I'll show <laughs> you how to do it. So it took me a while to learn, you know, because you, people have a tendency, you want to push the dog, push the dog, push the dog. Well, you can push them to ruin, you know. You right. gotta have an eye for it and know when to stop them, when to back off. You know, it, it's nice to see them when they just run and run and run. And some will run it till they fucking drop. You don't want to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so stop it before they get to that point. And like we said last week, and Ram, you know, reiterated, uh, you know, you, you you get that heart rate up, and you know, in the beginning they'll run hot. Sooner at the end, they'll it will take them longer to run hot, and in the beginning, take them longer to recoup, and at the end, take some shorter time to recoup. And that's a that's a measure of where you're at in your condition. If at the end it's the same, you, you did something wrong, you know. Right. They should each each one should improve. Should take them longer at the end to run hot, and it should take them shorter time to recoup. If that don't happen, you fucked up. Right. Yeah, and that's like the most important part is that quick recovery because if yeah. you can recover on your feet and mm-hmm. the other one you competing against can't, you you got a better chance of taking over and, and you that's know, right. bringing yeah. it home. But if you got to take too long to recover, like I said last week, a motherfucker get out there fast on you. It's like when I'm racing, I don't give a fuck what you in. If I out 60 foot you, you have to come around me or I'm going to be there before you. And that's just in my RT, you know. Same yeah. with the animals. If a motherfucker could fucking get on you and get past you, you lost it, you know. It took too long to recover and too much fucking went on, you know. You might be down for the rest of the fucking go. So, yeah, always pay attention to that recovery, you know, with emphasis on the recovery, how long it takes. If you can recover in the corner or right there in hole, great. That's what you want. But if you can't, if you at the top of the top, you finna get your hat handed to you, man. <laughs> right. Salute to Doug in the super chat. Much love, much appreciate you, family. Salute to you. Hey Thompson, uh, what's your thoughts on the slant mail? I couldn't agree anymore with what the panel discussed. It's pr- pretty much what I use it for is recovery. That. It's like Mr. Garcia alluded to. It's really a telltale of where you're really at with the dog because that you can primarily base your whole working program around hand walking and a slap mill and some light spring pole work and some flirt and a flirt pole. But it's really about seeing how it is predicated to make a dog recover on his feet where you don't have to take the bottom to, to recover. And you can have them break into a slow trot and then go into a burst but you're just watching and observing. It's, it's really a tool that tells you, even though it's work itself, it actually tells you where you're at because a lot can be seen on the slap mill. And like everybody said, it's something that you got to learn how to use. I work them hard on it, but I give proper 
rest time and recovery when I'm working them dogs. That's where I was fucking up. You can burn them out real fast if you're just consistently hitting it, hitting it. You got to have proper recovery for your dog. If you work them hard, take the day, next day off. Do something real light. Don't it, It's used to tell you where you need to be at, but at the same time, you can destroy a dog on it, like Mr. Garcia alluded to. And you, you'll do more destruction and you won't get the information that you need to get. And then it's just like the whole thing's counterproductive. That's why a lot of people, either they don't have the animal that can manipulate it the correct way, or they have an animal that can manipulate it the right way, but they're using the piece of equipment wrong. So it's an art to doing it, and it takes a long time to master it. And different dogs equal different work results. So you can't hold each dog to this, the same standard as another dog manipulating that piece of machinery it's really it's a crazy part it's a crazy piece of equipment when you really look at it but that's my take on it so so what would you guys say is the best method for somebody who, who never used the slap mill they got a slap mill they won't start uh using using it with their dog what do they do they start off for what two minutes five minutes or, or is it dog no nah, just once the dog get used to it what i do and he running hard on it as soon as he breaks strike take him off Boom, you just got your maximum effort out of them for that one burst. Let them recover, do it again, and just build up. It's not no set time when you first starting it or when you, the time you at the end. Is, you guessing you know by the end he could go for 10 minutes now full blast. It's more of an estimate. Sometimes, you know, I had one get up to 17 minutes full blast on it every time, you know. But that was a working motherfucker. Every dog ain't like that, and I wasn't expecting that, you know. I wasn't expecting him to go past fucking 11 minutes full speed, you know. And he went 17 consistently, but, you know, it's no set time is my whole point in that. It's just uh, estimate if you right here, I expect you by the middle of it to be right here, you know, give or take, you know. Yeah, well, that, and I can't agree with Ram any more with that. It. Yeah, it's like you know again with because the, da the, like the dangerous dogs is the ones that, the dangerous dogs is the ones that get on it and they can fly like the workaholics like Ram said. That's when it gets dangerous because those dogs you really got to hold them back. It's yeah. so easy to get those ones that just explode on that motherfucker and you're just like wow. You those are the ones you really need to hold back, especially if you're just starting to work them. Hold them back even though they want to do it. Make them scream. To want to get on that motherfucker. That that's how you manipulate it with him. Exactly. Like I was saying, it's like when I street race, I run a nine second something consistently, but it's not always a nine six five. Sometimes when it's cooler, I run a nine four one. When it's hotter, you know, I run a higher end of nine. It's the same with the slap mill time. You know, I know the estimated time is gonna be, but I don't know the exact. So you don't want to start putting exact times on it, you know. Because you could overwork the dog or be highly disappointed when he don't meet your expectation. Like, so just the dog will tell you, you know, and he'll tell you by when he breaks stride. Just pay attention to it. And like Thompson was saying right now, you got one who just get on it and burn out, you know, kind of hold back and make sure you pay, you know, close attention to his joints and shit. Because that's usually the first thing that goes is joint. Then the shoulders is next. So you don't want to blow either one of those out. So, you know, just be mindful. If you can, you know, find somebody in your area who knows how to use it and, you know, have them show you how they do it. And you incorporate what they showed you into what you got going on. But if not, just be real careful because like schoolboy said, you know, you want to fuck a dog up on the mill, come see him back in the day. <laughs> I was the same way, though, using it wrong, you know. Yeah. The shit looked cool and it's amazing to see him do it, but Every tool is used for its fucking proper motherfucking place in the dog game. It's no different than wrenches. I can't put a fucking eight socket, eight millimeter socket on a fucking 10 millimeter boat. It's just not going to work ever. Every yeah. tool got its place for it, you know? Just use it the right way. You can be more successful than not. Yeah. It's like track and field. There's no, there's no sprint, three mile sprint, you know? Right. You, you don't, you don't. They don't, that's why they have, you know, 100 meter, 50 meter, whatever it is, you know, even relay race, they each run, you know, a certain distance and trade off because you can't, you can't sprint full blast balls out for that long. 
if you do, you're going to hurt yourself. Right. You may be able to do it, but the end result is going to be you're, you're messed up, you know. Fuck, yeah. Kind of like, I couldn't run my fucking challenger <laughs> for no goddamn mile straight, you know, full no. on. I'm going to blow the like transmission that. out, everything. Yeah. Like, my yeah. shit is tuned for an eighth or a quarter mile. Yeah. Present exactly. it even for a half mile, I'll blow my shit up, man. Same yeah. with the dog, yeah. you know. Same with people, everything I'll correlates, th- you know. I'll throw in if you got if you dealing with if you got a young introduce your young dogs to that male. I, uh, several times you hear the panel say that as far as people who want to work their dogs on the male, introduce your the dogs to it young. You don't have to work a puppy hard. You could just sit the puppy on the mill and just let them sit there, but introduce it to them. And when you work the mother dogs, let the other dogs see you work that one dog. If you're trying to use that equipment on your yard, it's something you got to implicate. Because if you're going to sit there and leave them dogs out there on the chain and just expect them to take to it at 15, 18 months, you, you ain't for a rude awakening. Make it easy on yourself and introduce the equipment that you want to use with your dogs at an early age, so it's not a shock to them. If you're raising your dogs and you're you're not just purchasing full-grown dogs and you're actually raising pups, introduce it to them young. Man, you ain't never lied, because there ain't nothing more frustrating than trying to get a dog to work when it's time to work, you know? You ain't got everything in place except that now it's all on the line. This motherfucker don't want to work worth a fuck. So you you right about that. Put them on there early. Let me ask you a question. Set them on it. What up, Bert? Go ahead, bro. Let me ask you a question. How do y'all feel? Because I got a homeboy who swear by... Now, I don't know if he's doing it the wrong way or the right way, because I'm not no no mastermind conditioner or no shit like that, but uh, he swear by... He used a, a fucking electrical... Uh, guy. He controls the dogs. He used a, a, like a human treadmill for the dog. Yeah, email. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he controlled their pace and went... Out, how fast they go, all that stuff, and he slowed it down when he wanted to. But then I heard other people say that that's not a, the best way to do it. They're saying that they sh- you should let the dog do it on its own or something. I don't know. What, well, what's yeah, because you you're not getting the, the maximum out the dog. Say your treadmill only go 10 miles an hour top speed. On a free spinning mill, the dog might be you know able to get up to 12, maybe 15, upwards of that miles per hour on it. So you're kind of holding them back for that, like, only thing I really ever used a email for was like uh, when I lived in the hood, like deep in the hood and shit, it'd be loose dogs running around. So instead of taking them off the slap mill and letting them cool off with the usual neighborhood, walk around the block, I would put them on that and let them cool off at, you know, a regular pace that he will be walking. You know, right. that's right. the only that's thing how, I would ever use that for. Yeah, that's how my buddy uses it. He uses it after the regular workout, you know, to cool him down. And, you know, you can get them up to half hour, two hours if you want, just depends, you know, it's, it's if you're going to use it in conditioning, again, it's more for endurance. It's not exactly for heart, you, not for heart yeah. rate, but it's but not for does, stamina, does, none of that. Yeah, it's not, just so that. he could keep his legs under him. You yeah, know? yeah. He, he does the same way you do after the workout, put them on there, cool them down, you know, that way you don't have to be out in public with your dog. So it's a fake. Yeah, it's fake hand. It's fake hand walking on my side. That's what everybody yeah. will ever yeah, that's, asked about. Yeah, because you know that's what they always say. It's just fake hand yeah. walking. It be yeah. loose dogs and shit running around, and you ain't trying to break up no accidentals. You know, nah, nah. when it's all on the line. So yeah, it's good for that. It's just you know good. Though. You still gotta watch him on that though, because if he get tired and he tethered to it and shit, he gonna you gonna. Come back and he gonna be getting drugged by that motherfucker hanging himself. So every yeah, tool you use, you know, outside, even when if you fucking running on the bike, you gotta be mindful. You just yeah, every tool you gotta be careful with, man, because it could fuck yeah. your shit up. Yeah. Why don't why don't pe- more people use the cat mill right now? Do you think it's just a matter of space? Yeah, yeah, yeah cause for a good one, like we used one, but we had enough space to where it was thirty feet long, and we was able to build a bank up and all that that the dog would need. So when he slowed down, he not just getting drugged by the cat mill because when that bitch get to swinging, it'll drag your dog down through there like how I be doing these Fords and Camaros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just the space factor. It's a good workout. It's one of the better ones according to a lot of the conditioners I knew. 
you know, the Mr. Gray used it, uh, Steve Hendricks, Danny Burton, a lot of them, a lot of them use right. it. And, and it's a, it's a kind of a natural workout because they're on the ground and, you know, the longer the, the longer the arm. I think when I visited Don Mayfield, he still had his old one there. I think his was 60 feet long. If it wasn't, I'm mistaken, it was at least 30 feet long. You know, that's a big difference. But he told us, I forget, it was just laying on the ground there. But even this area was, it was a huge area, man, where he had his, his cat mill at. And, you know, the, some people I've seen them, it's, it's 12 feet or 15 feet only. So that's a, that's a lot different. But, you know, the, the longer the arm, I would say the better. But yeah, you would a, think. A, yeah, you would think it's the longer because, like, you get that. They get that. They get that nice. Uh, that nice. Uh, yeah. lap in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah and they get more they, distance. They, they, yeah, and they ain't gonna get fucking dizzy running around in a circle. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, one guy I know, he he's man. If people, you know, I can't say how he does it, but if more people would use it the way he does you'd get a lot more out of your dogs. It's very unique and it's a little bit different than most people. And he's the best fucking conditioner I ever seen. Better than me even. <laughs> God, man, that's a lot. Uh, hey, stop that in the chat, man. The only one thirty you went to was to lunch, bro. <laughs> yeah. <Quit playing. laughs> yeah. But but uh yeah, it's a it's the preferred method. Even even some people will, will use it with a tread, you know, a, a, a slap mill or a carpet mill. Their main tool was the, was the cat mill. You know, I, I never used one. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't afford the, the people seeing it, even though I was out in the country, you know, it's just California was different than a lot of places. Even back then, you know, it wasn't that bad, but it was worse than say in the deep South, you know, you couldn't have a lot of, People seeing what you're doing or knowing what you're doing right. like that. So, and I just, I just use a bike, but like Ram said, even that, you know, if you can get a dog to run alongside the bike, that's great. But again, you need a lot of room. You need acres yeah. and acres or somewhere you can go and run. But, you know, the downfall is to that. If they see something on either side and front behind, Oh yeah, you go going with them. Hell, you're, you're going gonna let them. that leash go, or you going with them? Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. why and I what, stopped riding yeah. the bike. Yeah, yeah. I've been yanked off that motherfucker so many times. Like you, son of a bitch. Well, see what what I learned to do was, it, it, even if they crossed in front of me, and I got dumped one time in my, all my years, and I thought I broke my shoulder, but but uh, they'll cross in front of you sometimes, you know, and that that'll twist you around. So what I would do is I'd just dump the bike. Whenever they start running, I held on to them, the lead, and jump off the bike or let the bike fall and just, you know, walk them down and slow it, go back, get on the bike. But if you, it's like anything else, you use it properly, it works. If it don't, you, and on a bike, you can hurt yourself bad, man. I mean, yeah, on what hell you yeah, I'm 5'10, yeah. 230. I ain't yeah. just jumping off a bike all smooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm getting yeah. dumped, and that shit yeah. ain't no fun. Yeah. <laughs> That one time it happened. Yeah, that's I an epic I, fail. I, I thought I broke my shoulder, and, and it, it was it happened to be right in front of my house. My son was out there because he would stand out there and watch me when I come back so he could take the bike from me, and then I could walk the dog, cool him down. But it was just as I was leaving, the dog cut in front of me, dumped me, and I told my brother, go get – I told my son, go get my brother, his uncle. I think I broke my shoulder. So he ran and got him. My brother came. What happened? Dog fucking dumped me. I think I broke my shoulder. He said, did you hear it pop? I said, no. He said, that it ain't broke. Get the fuck up. We got to work this dog, man. We got to win, you know. <laughs> uh, put some dirt on it. Yeah, yeah, no, nap. <laughs> yeah, walk it off. No, no sympathy, man, you know, because he, uh, you know, he, he had some money on it, too. So, fuck yeah, it. Get yeah, up. Yeah, like, uh, fuck your shoulder. You all right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like that, you know. Another thing, just kind of a joke, you know, a lot of people, you know, you win and lose, right? And And if you married or you got a girlfriend or whatever, you know, you, you lose, they come back. Oh, it's be all right. It, you know, you, you don't get them next time. This and that. Really? And my wife wasn't like that, man. She's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You spent all that time working that dog. You come back and you lost, you know, da, 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 da. And it didn't, Ugh. it didn't make me feel bad, but it did inspire me to do better. Cause if I come home, I got to deal with this. Fuck, Hell yeah. yeah. That's the kind of friend I am too. I'm I yeah. told you so rub yeah. it yeah. in. Like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like that. Like that. Yeah.
it, yeah, it, could, it, it could you could have it work for you. You know what I mean? It, it, fuck that! I ain't gonna deal with this shit. I'm gonna win. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. I motivated a lot of people just with yeah. my shit talking. They just, shut yeah. up! I'm gonna yeah. prove you wrong. Okay, yeah. then do it. Go graduate, yeah. then, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's a little bit about the past in schoolboy life. <laughs> yeah. Let me see here. Hey, fact, yeah. boss man Jones. Yeah, I do like to let them run different ways too. Like I face them one way, and then you know, a couple of days switch them back to the, a different way. But you know, if your meal ain't set up like that, because meals now you could adjust the bar forward, backwards, up, down, to where you don't really gotta you know physically change them around. You can still keep it elevated one way, but the front legs would be further back, and the back legs would be sticking out the back a little further. But yeah, I, I get you on that too. Cause the front legs do work a little bit more when they sticking off the front of the mill. Boom. Then that's yeah. when they got more solid plant on there. So yeah. yeah, keep that in mind too. If you is going to use the mill, switch directions with them. Yeah. With a cat mill. Yeah. Most people will. One day they run them one direction. The other day they run them the other direction because it'll generally they're one, they, they create a bank or they run up on a bank. So one side could conceivably become more muscular than the other side. Right. So oh yeah. Cat, yeah, on the yeah. cat people, cat mill, the people I knew, they they would go one one day one direction, the other day the other direction. Yeah, that's what we used to have to do when um, OG taught me that when I was locked up and shit. We had to run around this small ass little gym. He said, "Man, you better start running that same direction. Your right leg gonna be big as a bitch." Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, said, I, said, I said, "Okay, that's a good little tip." And, uh, yeah. yeah, run back, run the other way. You know, switch that shit up. Let me see here. Let me see here. We got. Um, how do you know if you're breeding too tight when it comes to a dog's performance wise? A dog performance wise. That's a question we always get. When your shit start ending up more in the cur pile and less in the good dog pile, do you know you fucking up, man? You start losing all the attributes that you know you got the dogs for in the first place. Now them motherfuckers just, you know, they either pulling up or they ain't showing the athleticism as the previous generation. Mouth might be gone. Like, you you will notice, you know, as far as physical attributes, you'll start getting undershot, overshot, bow-legged, like them super inbred midnight cowboy dogs, you know, just, you you can see it, you know, if you looking. But if you're just making breedings, you ain't going to fucking know. There's a motherfucker who got dogs right now, only winners in the fucking fourth and the fifth, talking that good old shit. Like, they dogging it. Man, get out of here with that bullshit, you know? Again, <laughs> who got the dogs and why you got them? So when you start losing the shit that you like, that's when you know you went too tight. Back up or start over, you know, depending on how bad you got. It, le it leads back into that kennel blindness shit. If you're not paying attention to what's going on, and especially if you're not raising and actually seeing what the fuck you're breeding. Like I said, yet again, it goes back into people in certain situations. You got people who buy dogs and you got people who breed dogs. And when you look at that situation, the people who breed them is the people who see what's going on. And that leads right into kennel blindness. If you do a breeding, every breeding should have a focal point of what you're trying to get. So you should be trying to enhance something or can... <laughs> or conserve something, it, it's, it's got to have a purpose. So if you go into it and you didn't have a purpose, and you're not paying attention, traits are lost in one breeding like Ram alluded to. One breeding, you could lose a whole trait. So you got to be cognizant of what you're putting together and the traits that you're trying to promote. Breeding tight is as bad as when you just keep doing it, like Ram said about those inbred dogs, where you start seeing a lot of bowed out features, can't be kennel blind. If you're breeding, especially breeding tightly, you have to have some kind of idea of what you're doing and some knowledge about the family tree of dogs when you're doing it, if you're doing it correctly. Other than that, you just fucking up some blood. What do you say, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, uh, one of the reasons I say you don't have to wait to throw a cross in there is for that reason exactly, you know, you, don't wait till something goes south because you're talking about making a breed. Let's say, you know, it, it is too tight. You ain't going to know till they're grown, you know, or, or as they're growing, you're going to see health problems or you're going to see 
you know, behavior problems or something like that. So, you know, you made, you made that tight breeding or kept breeding them tight and weren't selective, didn't call them properly, all that. You still ain't going to see it till they've grown up. So why wait till something goes bad to throw a cross or make a line breeding with a cross in it already? You know, you don't have to wait. People are so, you know, worried about losing blood, losing purity. Well, 100% pure shit is still shit. You know, you, 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 if you know how to breed, even if you throw a cross in there, you're going to follow the traits. You know, you, 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 the cross, if it's a total outcross 50-50, it's either going to take after one side or the other side or both sides. So you make your decision based on that, you know, and, and you, you take that and, and, you know, typically you go back to your blood. But it has that cross in there where you don't have that them fucked up dogs in there so you know i'm not saying make crosses all the time some people do I, I don't like breeding that way you know some do it successfully i guess you know but but throwing one in there every so often even if it's every three four generations you know don't don't wait till it goes south because you you're not just you know a breeding and now you have it's messed up you, you're you're two years behind because, you know, it's not going to show itself till later, you know, unless there's some physical problem they have when they're young. And then even then you lost months or uh, breeding or whatever, you know. So so that's one of the reasons why I say don't wait to throw a cross in there. You don't, you know, you don't, don't wait till, till your house is on fire to go hook up the hose, you know, and then start spraying your house. Don't have it hooked right. up already, you know. And then right. have your plan if the fire starts. Same thing with the dog. Don't wait till something goes south, especially if it's something you, you're thinking about breeding to anyways, or you see a dog you like that's available. You know, that's kind of how I did it. You know, I would see something like Champion Ninja or or Champion uh, Knucklehead or something like that. I like them dogs. You know, I breed to them. Right. Good. Good. You know, it, they work. So that's my thing on it. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Thompson, did you answer that question yet? The, the, uh, inbreeding? I think you answered that, didn't you? Yeah, I cooked on it. Yeah, I cooked on it, brother. Okay. Um, all right. How to use a breaking stick. Um, this is, I wish I had a video I could play to show people. Uh, that would be an easy uh, demonstration. I'm sure YouTube got to have some videos. But let's start with you, Ram. How to use a breaking stick. Hold on while I blaze. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, what I do, I use it a little different. I had big ass hands, I was strong <laughs> as fuck. So I always make sure I get it in the back of the mouth and uh, you know, but get between the gum and that back tooth, and I'm strong enough to just, you know, put it a little forward in. You know, like if I'm throttling a motorcycle and just pop right. a wheelie, boom, like that. Now, if you do that shit in the front of the mouth, you can pop out a cutter, you know. So, mm -hmm. and I didn't done that before just from, again, I'm bam, bam, dumb stream strong. So, yeah, that's how I use it. That's what worked for me. You know, get it, get your hand on the opposite side of the action so you don't get bit. Get it high up on the head, you know, good, but below the ear, but high up on the scruff of the neck. Boom, hold that. Put it in there, get it in the back, pop a willy, pull your shit back. You know, it's that easy. Once you get the hang of it, you know, uh, you, you check them yourself by yourself, you know, when you get good at doing it like that. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's easy to use, but a lot of people misuse that, too. Again, every tool got its own way. Now, some people I know like to use the, the pump method like you would an old school bumper jack and just pump it to open it up again my strong ass i done fucking popped out teeth doing that too so i just get right to the back boom pop a willy snatch that shit up you feel me right. it's that easy for me but just getting the handle on the dog and getting your hand your holding hand in the proper position is more important because you don't want to get bit when you come out of that shit because either you know the dog he on gonna try to get you and your hand gonna be in the way or he might fucking 
reach back and don't want to won't want to get off this motherfucker ass yet. So turn him loose and he gonna reach back and nip your ass so he can stay in the action. That's like you know if we in the bar fight and I'm on the motherfucker ass, don't come back behind me and grab me. I'm finna elbow the shit out you. I don't care who you is. Same with the animals. You know you gotta be mindful of that. <laughs> so yeah, get your hand out the way, your grabbing hand. Pop that shit in there and get them out. That's what worked for me. Yeah, I think you gotta uh, most definitely people gotta get used to handling their dog, um, grabbing them, holding them, being able to control your animal. I'm so tired of looking at videos on YouTube and Instagram of somebody's dog getting loose and it, it attacking another dog or some shit like that. They get into some scrap and motherfuckers is hitting the dog off inside the head. Kicking the dog in the nuts, putting the water <laughs> on the dog, and that's like, dude, this shit could be over with in literally five seconds if you motherfuckers had a breaking stick and knew how to handle your fucking dog. It's just a waste of time. I don't yeah, know don't be you. scared too, because a lot of people be scared to get in there. You think you know and get the action broken up. Don't right. get in there and be no hoe. Yeah, if you're gonna be a hoe with the dog when it's going down, you gotta break them up. Then this shit ain't for you. You just you you just gonna be a hoe. You got to just man up, get in there and break that shit up, man. <laughs> you know, don't be scared. You, if you get bit, you get bit. That's the price to, to play, you know. And, that, and that's the good That's the good thing yeah. about having a smaller dogs, too. Because uh, when some shit go down, you snatch one of them motherfuckers by the back of their fucking skin, their neck. But one arm, get your ass over here. And then click. You know what I <laughs> mean? Pop, put the, use that breaking stick. You start getting into them 75-pound dogs and shit, man. Jeez, we. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh what you say? Uh, but that's the whole key to that situation. That's the whole key to that shit is being comfortable handling your dog. You know, I tell anybody if you walk in these type of dogs around, and you you better have a breaking stick with you. You don't know what type of stray can run up. Anything can happen. And when they pop off, that's what happened. Every time some shit pop off with them dogs and all them stupid ass videos. Nobody has a breaking stick. 20 people outside, dog, or it break off in a whole dog park. Nobody in the dog park has a breaking stick. Right. And just like Ram alluded to, it's pretty much popping a willy. You want to get it in the base, the back part of the dog's mouth, and you want to turn back, depending on how strong you is. That's another part of this, having a dog that you can actually fucking control if some shit happens. And a lot of times, people don't know the strength of their own animals. When the shit pop okay. off, they're scared. They stay scared and they can't control it. By yourself, it's like breaking up two grown motherfucking men fighting. You know, you gotta put some strength Horrible. on that shit. You know, and yeah, that's why I say that's why I do it how I, cause I'm super dumb strong and I ain't trying to fuck my dog teeth up. I know, like dog man RT was saying, he put it, you know, try to get it on the dog tongue, all of that, so he could just, you know, get it loose. But just, you know, I. I I'm just dumb strong. I be fucking shit up, man. Yeah, so, yeah they that's you know how they the got way you. I do it. Yeah, the way I do it works for me. Everybody get to leave with their teeth, you know. Yeah. But again, all I'm I can, all I tell you is that. be fast with what you're doing. Yeah, be fast yeah. with what you're doing. And if you're if you're 130 pounds and you're dealing with 60 pound bulldogs, 55 pound bulldogs, you better be a strong 130 fucking pounds, bro. You better be a strong 130 pounds, man. If not, you better get yourself some smaller dogs, man. Some 35 pounds that you could control. Because, yeah. I mean, they're, they're strong, man. You got to have some, some ass on you to, to handle these dogs, man. And I mean, you could feel a little bit underneath the weather and go out there and one of them snatch up out of your hand and then they break loose. You got to, they, they're not weak, play, play type of dogs. They just not. Yeah, and it's it's the same motion. I would say, uh, Ram said like the, uh, um, like on a motorcycle. I would say like same. Anybody who ever used, if you lift weights, you ever use the Smith machine. You ever bench press on the Smith machine? You know how you gotta turn your wrist, uh, either one way or the other to get it off of the bar, and then the racket you gotta pull your wrist. Sometimes I have to do that with. I know with Nino when I had Nino. Depending on the bike. Sometimes the bike, if they got a thicker, if their mouth is open more, they got a thicker piece of uh, a wider gap in there. You can put the breaking stick in there, and sometimes you can go forward, back a little bit, and it'll pop right open. Sometimes you just go forward, it open. Sometimes you go back, it open. 
But you might have to wiggle that motherfucker a little bit, you know what I mean, to get out the way quick, fast, in a hurry before they try to get another grip and then snatch your finger or some shit. What, what you say, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, the I've seen a lot of videos on there, you know. First, I'll say, you know, any way you can break the dog off, I guess that's success, you know. But but I've seen a lot of videos, and, and most of them, they do something wrong, you know. And, and they're not, how would you say, they're not uh, reality. Because most of the dogs, are they're trained, you know. Once somebody puts a stick in their mouth, they let go anyways. In mm -hmm. the real world, uh, with pit bulls, they don't want to let go. You know, they 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 fighting to hold on. So, you know, they, they, I've used all kinds of stuff. I've used breaking sticks, hammer handles, screwdrivers, pieces of wood, branches, all kinds of stuff. It's just a mess. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I ain't shitting you. Whatever's handy, I can, you know, if I can make it work, I'll make it work. Because it's a technique that matters, not so much how you do it. Sometimes you have to twist it. But twisting ain't the best option. And most people will twist it because they think it's like a pry bar. You prying the dog's mouth open. And the way the stick is, you know, it's thinner on one end and it widens up. And like Ram said, you get as close to the back of their head as you can. So you can control the dog. I've seen a lot of videos where they're holding the collar. The collar don't control shit. All it does maybe is you can choke the dog out. And if you don't have a stick, yeah, choking the dog out, that's, that's probably the best way. Choke them out till they can't breathe. They'll open their mouth a little bit. You pull them off. But the proper use of any, not the proper, but the best way that I've found to use is, is, is a dog's in hold. Even in, and I'll say this too. When two pit bulls are getting in the fight, don't, don't be in a rush to do it. They ain't going to kill each other in five seconds. Take yeah. your time. Get in position. Put them between your legs. Hold the scruff of their neck, you know. Get that stick up to their mouth. And sometimes, you know, you can't get it in the forward part. So you do go to the back of the mouth. It's easier sometimes. There's more room there. And what I do generally is most people will pull tug on the dog. That just makes them hold on tighter. That's harder to get the stick in. So what I do is I let them go, for, I let them go forward a little bit. That makes them open their mouth a little bit for a better hold, right? When they do that, you just slide the stick in, slide it all the way through. You can press down and pull them out. Or you go to the back, you know, of their mouth and it opens their mouth up. You just pull them off. It's pretty simple, but you have to have, you know, you have most people are scared of dogs. You can't be afraid of dogs. I'm more worried about some cur snapping piece of shit, you know, breaking that. I wouldn't even try to break a cur dog off because. They're going to, as soon as the other one lets go, they're going to run off or they're going to snap and cry and all that. Right. So, you know, if you in, you're in you on the street and some happens, just concentrate on your bulldog, you know, get him off. The other one will go away. If they don't, then you, you need two sticks or, you know, if they're up close, if they're in the mouth, I, I can get both of them off with one stick. I've done that before. You know, there's a technique to that, too. But the twisting, turning, even if it's plastic, you know, if it's wood, you can get splinters in their mouth. You got it too far forward and you start twisting, you're going to break their teeth. The plastic, you know, even though that's more solid, it doesn't splinter that way. When you rub it across their teeth, pieces of plastic going to get fall off, you know, and all that. They're going to swallow it, whatever, get stuck in between their teeth and gum, whatever. So the smoother you are, the, 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 the better is to, to get them off with no, no injury, no splinters, no nothing, no broken teeth, no nothing. But that's what I do. Basically, I, I put it up to their mouth, let them reach for a hole, slide it across, down like that. But people, nice they do smooth. panic and nice and smooth. And, and people do panic and they get, I've seen seasoned dog men do that. They run over there, ah, 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 like that. You know, one time I was taking care of two dogs. I didn't have dogs, but I held a couple of dogs for my friend, right? And I didn't have no candle, no chain, no nothing. One of them was out there and my grandkid, he has autism, so I don't blame him, you know. He opened the door. The other dog ran out, and they got into it. And it was dark. Nobody was around, me and my son. I said, you know, go grab something. Break them off. They were going at it. He come back. He said, what are we going to do? I said, let them go for a little bit, you know. Wait till they settle down a little bit. And, and they did, and I just stuck that hammer handle, boom, real quick, and got them out, you know. 
It wasn't even a breaking stick. You know, I've been to conventions, yeah. big conventions. I'm telling you, eight, ten. They don't got no breaking stick. They don't got no defanger, nothing. So that we're breaking limbs off the tree. We'll use it. Okay, I'll use that. I don't care. I can use just about anything, even a screwdriver. And screwdriver, all metal, it's got the point in it. So you got to be careful. But it's the same technique. Slide it across, open their mouth, pull them out. Done. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't use pins for defangers and shit before, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, yeah Some yeah. long enough to get in there. Don't try to yeah. defang with your hand. Trust me. No. Yeah. And, and again, same thing. I've been to convention. They don't have shit. I just use my hand. There's a way to use your hand. It's dangerous. You can get. Oh, well, it. yeah. I'm saying been, for if you know, you're not experienced yeah, like yeah. that, yeah, yeah, this is for the novice. Yeah. I ain't talking yeah, to yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the experienced yeah. dog, man. Yeah. We know. Well, even, even, even experienced guys, they've been bit because there's a way to defang them. You know, most of them go in there with their finger, which is, that's cool. You know, you try and pop it out. Me, I always put my hand over their muzzle and I control that muzzle, even if they're in hole. And then I slip my finger in there, you know, and pop it out. Yeah. But you, yeah, you don't want to be doing that. I, that that's, that's old that's school not, right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not, that's not, I'm not telling people how to do it, but. But no, you, that's game right there for real. Yeah, yeah. Cause I didn't even yeah, know you know, that, you know? Yeah. 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 If, I wouldn't if, even uh, thought to do uh, that. I'm just used to the, getting a the pen yeah. and do pop that yeah. shit out, man. Let's go. Yeah. 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 I was, I was repping in Michigan one time, a long time ago. And uh, they didn't have shit. They didn't have sticks. They didn't have defanger, nothing, you know. So got dogs fanged. So I went up there, did my technique, unfanged, you know, real quick, just boom, like that. He goes, was he fanged? I go, you, you're the one said, told me to unfang him. Yeah, he was fanged. You know, he goes, how'd you get him loose? You saw me, you know, just right. like that, you know. So oh, slide so, of the hand like a magician. Slide of the hand, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quick, you know. And they, they like, they were everybody looking like, wow. You know, but but and again, I'm not telling anybody that's how you should do it. But so if you don't got nothing else, just like if you don't have a stick, choke them, choke them out. Don't beat them. Don't don't you know, don't kick them. Don't stick your finger up their ass. Don't water. None of that shit works. All it does is. Uh, make yeah. them wanna, don't kick them. Yeah, you, <laughs> you fucking kick me while I'm on the motherfucker. Don't kick them in the nuts. I'm just going to start yeah. fighting harder. You know, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You and know? if you put water on them, you're just making them run cooler, so they're going to yeah, be there they, longer. Be there you know? longer, exactly. Like you said, exactly. it's best to just let them go in the hole. You know, once yeah. they go up and they're doing all that shit to jockey for yeah. a position, then somebody going to get a shoulder hole, somebody going to get something else hole. Let yeah. them get in there and work that a little bit. You're not just because yeah. you want them to see, but yeah. you just you it's safer for everybody like that, unless you just got a goddamn alligator dog. Yeah. You usually ain't going to bite nothing up in that quick of a time you know yep yep yeah most most of the time they ain't you know i mean if you got a killer he you, you oh, can't yeah. be fat you you can't be fat enough, but most of them they ain't gonna kill each other that quick it's just people in their mind you know ah, i gotta get them stopping this yeah, and that and i gotta fucking you know, freaking hey, out calm, calm down they're shit. all right yeah they're yeah, all right dogs are, the dogs are tough you know they take a little shit you know what i mean yeah just because so, you would get your ass kicked that fast don't mean your dog yeah, will yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Exactly. So that's just, you know, but the videos, I won't say they're bad. It's just the situations are not real situations. And like I said, they're not bulldog people doing it. Some of them, I've seen them even, you know, they'll use those, what are they, tent stakes or whatever. Yeah. But they're putting it on, they're putting it on the, the top side. They're not, it's not on the bottom jaw side, you know, and they're, and they're putting it on the top side and the dog comes out. Well, the dog's used to being broke off because he's a trained dog, you know. So in, in real life, that wouldn't work, you know, it's just, and a lot of them have, like I said, they have dogs that they, they use for, for legal sports and this and that, and they're used to be breaking, being broken off all the time. I didn't like using sticks. Even if I was rolling my dogs by myself, I rarely used the stick. I just let them go. And yeah, you got to let them go sometime. And when they come out of hole, I snatch one off and drop him down, let them go out again. Then I trade off this and that. You know? I had a pen was an old chicken pen, had a door on it, and that's where I would roll my dogs by myself, you know. And it's just, you know, when I'm when I'm done, you know, with the roll, I just I get them close to the door, snatch them up, throw one outside, and, you know, chain the other one up in the corner, and then go chase the other one down, you know, like that, you know. But, but yeah, uh, shit, usually the one outside, he coming back to the door like yeah, Fuck yeah, that. yeah, Let me yeah, back yeah, in. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't gonna run off. He's trying to go through the fence. You know, he's trying to get back in. So, you know, it just sometimes I didn't have nobody around, or I'd have my wife, you know, or something. And just 
Yeah, yeah me, me. You yeah, know? that's why I alluded to earlier. If you could get good at you know handling by yourself, you can start looking by yourself, and you ain't got mm -hmm. everybody ain't got to see what you got until you ready exactly. to go. Exactly. If that's you right. fucking around in another country like that, you know none of yeah. this shit yeah, for the yeah, people yeah. over here. But right, right, right. Yeah. And, and what I talk about is the past, but that was exactly the well, reason I did it. I could see my shit; nobody else could. I knew exactly. I so they, yeah, they when, they, when a motherfucker do see it, you know it's it's, it's go time. <laughs> you yep, don't know what exactly. the fuck I got it. Now I'm not telling you. If I had an yep. alligator or a goddamn head player, you about mm -hmm. to see. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you won't see shit beforehand. Fuck you. We ain't on the same team. We could be homies and cool, but hey, when it get down to the nitty gritty, shit, it ain't your business to know what I got. <laughs> yeah, it's your hey. business to try to neutralize it. <laughs> Salute to Hampton USA Kennels. What's up, fam? Salute to you in that super chat. Much love, much appreciation. Says salute, fellas. Hashtag working stock for life. No name. Natural dewormer supplements. Yeah, salute. Yeah, that shit worked good too. Yeah, cuz send me some of that um the wormer he got. That shit work. Real smooth. Oh uh, what's, yeah, what's the what's the original name of that do, shit? Uh, yeah, I'll do a review on that, man. I'll check it out then. Yeah, yeah it's working it's, like that. Yeah, it's it's smooth, man. I didn't know what it was. I thought he had sent me some cause he didn't tell me he was sending that. Cause I had ordered these calendars from him. And then he sent that. And I'm like, what the fuck this nigga sent me some heroin and shit, man. What the fuck is this shit? They go try to get me locked up. It was like some brown <laughs> shit in the bag. I said, oh, shit, I'm looking around like, what this nigga to send me? Yeah, then I, I, I put two and two together. Yeah, it was, it was the shit, though. Let me see here. Smooth Monty in the Super Chat. What it do, fam? Much love, much appreciation, homie. He says, what's uh, the age is the uh, the latest of pup with uh, testicles with the sin? 12 months. Salute, family. Appreciate you, homie. Thanks for that Super Chat. Um What's the latest for them nuts to drop, yo? And I don't know. I had a dog, one nut drop. I thought he was going to be one nut his whole life. So I named him one nut, and he's like two, two and a half, the second one drop. You know? It, yeah. Usually, though, they drop around six months, but, you know, 12, 18 just depend on the dog, you know? Some dogs just got Ron Jeremy ball, you know? <laughs> Well, they might be dropped. It's just little as fuck. Yo, wait, hold on. Yo, so when the when the other when the other when the other nut dropped, you named them two nuts. You named that yeah, motherfucker no. two nuts when the other one dropped. He was, he was still one nut. <laughs> fuck that. You know, I ain't fucking sending the papers in to change his name, nigga. He's still one nut. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, usually, really usually, is. usually by three months they're dropped. If not that, by six months they drop. If they don't drop by then, you might have a problem. Uh, yeah, and, uh, like I always say, just take them to the vet and see. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You take take them to the vet and 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 all that. Some they never drop, and that that's you know you, you use them for something else. But they yeah, won't, yeah. You they got like Ron Jeremy up. balls. You yeah. know, you yeah. got little ass yeah. balls. Yeah, yeah. Big <laughs> uh, still count though. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, as long as they work, you know. Exactly, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Some dog yeah, like my yeah. puppy, you know, his nuts dropping. He went to hunting shit. His dingus come out, and he only four months old. You mm -hmm. know, that's not usual. You know, yeah. True. Every dog gonna be different, bro. You know, yeah, yeah. But yeah, if he he ain't drop, you know, by six months, take him to the vet, man. But some do drop later than others. Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. What's up, kids? You can't see in the building, man. Salute. Can you look in here? All right, let me see what other questions we had. Um, oh, uh, how to deal with mange? Mange on the dog. Uh, you ever had to deal with that, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, just from memory now, I don't, I, I don't know new shit, but, but, uh, there's two types of mange. One is, is, uh, contagious, the other one ain't. And, and, uh, the, the mange comes from these mites. You know, one of them, they're microscopic. You can't even see them. But but uh, what it does, you know, it's like a like a uh, like a mosquito. You know, they get on the dog and they the, the one that's that's transferable, you know, uh, that's what they kind of call a head mange. And they'll start right. getting sp uh, spots, sore spots, even bleeding all over their skin, you know, or you like you see a lot of these cur dogs out on the street. They got mange all over them. Right. And and uh, you know there there's a they dips for it 
back in the day, you know, and, and usually you, you use antibiotics with that because the infection can cause, you know, the mange can cause an infection. So you treat them with the mange product and then antibiotics that go along with it. The, the one that's not transmittable, they, they have it when they're pups and they get it from their mother and it doesn't transfer, you know, it's not contagious that way. And usually, you know, dogs have a good immune system that it just goes away. It's just a, a natural thing. If they have a weak immune system, then same thing. They could, it could fuck up their skin and all that. And, and it's just treated, you know, they, back then we had dips for it. You know, I never had a mange problem. And the main thing is keep your area clean, keep the dogs clean. Just like we say, don't, you know, preventative maintenance. You know, I was a, I was a master at preventative maintenance because I wasn't a good doctor. We couldn't, I couldn't take my dogs to the vet. I could, a lot of this stuff wasn't available over the counter. So you really had to pay attention to dogs, take care of them. But if you keep the area clean, just like, you know, don't have no standing water from mosquitoes and spray. I used all chemicals and all that. Now they have natural stuff. And, you know, Ram knows more about that than I do, which is probably better. But but if you keep the area clean, you know, you'll have less chance of them getting. Those are the two types of veins they get. And, and I'm sure they probably have some pill you give or some cream, even an antibiotic cream for it. Or something to kill the mites, you know that that, that causes the mange nowadays. You know, that's, that's yeah. It with me. Yeah, my neighbor dog, two houses down, dog recently had mange, and he was asking me, and I just give y'all the same tip that I fucking found out just from growing chronic indoors, and say if I go get a fucking clone cut from somebody, it might be mite eggs on that and contaminate my whole shit. And usually it's going to happen around the time you in flower, so you can't spray chemicals on the, the fucking flowering. So I just use the, you can go to Home Depot and get it. The motherfuckers ain't paying me, so I ain't going to name drop them. But it's the blue bottle of all natural bug spray. And it's, you know, all natural shit. You can spray it right on the flower. He sprayed that shit on his dog and shit, and that shit cleared up in a week, you know. But it's all natural, and it's, you know, that's what we would use for the mites. And since mange is a mite, itself holds yeah. out of there fur grew back all that like and this was maybe a month ago so yeah this shit looking brand new you know yeah yeah and that's it's all natural shit garden. yeah you know yeah, that's, what, that's what i used you know to exactly. tomatoes all that it's yep, a natural yep. organic yeah. uh pesticide you know exactly you, hurt none. You, you could eat the tomatoes or and yeah nowadays you could, exactly you could smoke, you smoke the shit yep. you know Ain't yeah, and it won't fuck up the weed at, at all, nope. for real. No. So, so yeah, man, you go to Home Depot and get it. You'll see it. It's in a garden section. And for those who got mites, I seen a goddamn puppy video shit look like mites hella bad on the pups. You feel me? So go on and put some of that shit on it. It's better than the dip, all of that. You don't got to worry about it. And like Mr. Garcia said, keep your fucking area clean, you know? Don't be no dirty dick motherfucker with these dogs. It's not fair to the dogs. You know, they can't fucking clean up. They don't know how to use a rake and a shovel. And if you got one that do, put him on TV. You, you're doing the wrong thing with him. That motherfucker <laughs> clean the yard. Fuck you doing? He can use a rake and a shovel. You should be rich. Until mm -hmm. then, keep that shit up, man. No standing water. Wash the dog bowl, feed bowl, the water bowl, all that, man. Clean that shit up. You won't have fucking mange. <laughs> like, I've never had mange, but I know plenty of good dog men who have, you know, yeah. just from yeah. getting caught lacking. And here they come, and it's hard as fuck to get rid of them. But, you know, with the uh, natural organic pesticide shit that I just talked about, that shit worked, man. You know, uh, I can honestly say it worked. It didn't hurt his dog at all. None of that. It just killed the fucking pest that was on him. Yeah. And his shit was yeah. bad. Like his shit was starting to get the little blood shit and all that from them just whooping on his ass. You know, he thought he's gonna have to put him down. Yeah, well, yeah. if you don't take care of it, you will have to put him down. I see one oh. guy, real experienced guy, famous. If I said his name, everybody would know who I'm talking about. But this Joe just goes to show that even experienced guys they can mess up sometimes. He had brought a dog in and during the show, his opponent flipped him over and you could see fleas all over his belly, man. They was crawling all over him. 
you know. So either yeah, you, you was, know yeah, we were talking you. about that on one of the shows. I was like, God damn, yeah. that's fucked up, yeah. man. Like, yeah. you know the dog yeah. got fleas. You can see them if it's that many, and they jumping yeah. off yeah. my pit side, and I can see them. I know your ass seen them just driving them up here, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I seen another one brought 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 a dog in. He went to walk him out, and I was standing there, and the dog took a shit, and it was all bloody and that. And he goes. Yeah. What do you think that is? I go, man, that's hookworms, and that's advanced, man. You know, they didn't, yeah, I wormed them this and that. Did you worm for hookworms? I don't know. What do you give them this and that? You know, so it, it says on the box here. for hookworms, roundworms, <laughs> yeah. like motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, and in both those cases, just to be honest, neither one of them won. You know, and I would say. Those, that's those, why you got that's, bad parasite that's, problems. That's why, yeah. You yeah. got about fifteen you minutes. Imagine, of you imagine, <laughs> you imagine ahead, how buddy. that must fucking feel when them dogs yeah. run hot and them flea, yeah. them fleas yeah. start yeah. moving fast when them because that yeah. you that's the first thing you know when you got fleas, even if you don't fucking see it. When them dogs run hot, them fleas start moving and then they can't focus. That's it. even yeah. that's even if you can't see fucking fleas. Yeah. Like that's bad, man. That's all the yeah, way fucking bad. Yeah. Man. yeah. Yeah. It's like so. sitting in a house full of roaches. Even if they ain't on you, you still gonna have the heebie jeebies. You yeah. know? Fuck that shit. You I ain't gonna be trying to fuck or none of that, you know? It, it, like, you know, if you if you're rubbing a, do- a dog down and this and that, you, you could you'll see the fleas around his butthole, man, if you pay attention. You'll oh, see yeah, them always, the, yeah. on their yeah. belly. They, they generally they'll they'll be around the, the areas where you know, you can see them better areas that have less hair. You know, you can see them crawling. Where it's thick, you might not be able to unless you start digging around looking. But around their butthole, inside by their groin, you know, inside thigh, you can see them fuckers walking around, crawling around and shit, you know. Right. The, the, the mange is harder because the mites are microscopic. But when you see them sores coming up and you see the dog scratching and itching, rubbing and all that, you know, you have a problem. You better address it. Well, uh, Thompson, you ever had to deal with it? Hell no. And I'm knocking on fucking wood right now. I don't want to feel none of that shit. I, I, <laughs> I've heard, I heard, and see, I've heard and seen a whole lot of different situations, and I mean, most of them ended up bad, bad. You know what I mean? So I'm glad Ram had put on about that natural, that natural remedy for it, spraying them dogs down with it, because I, I never had it. Because I'm, I'm. I lean towards more of Mr. Garcia. I'm into preventative maintenance, man. I don't like to have to spend money on bullshit when you could just spend a little bit of money preventing something. Because, I mean, yeah. shit gets expensive, man. And it's a lot of time. And then you got to take care of this fucked up dog. And God forbid somebody comes and sees the fucked up dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's a lot that goes into that shit. So, even, I mean, yeah, even that preventative maintenance one. is key. Yeah, even that organic one, when you spray it, you'll see the bugs react to it. Even if you don't see no bugs there, they'll come to the top of their hair. They're trying to get away. Well, yeah, even on, when even, we even on, on plants, the plants, the yep. motherfuckers jump right off. they like, yeah. hell no. Yep. Abandoned exactly. ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's all natural, though. So, yeah, yeah, keep that, man. That was a good little tidbit for y'all. If yeah. you is dealing with mange, just know it's not no fucking hot spot. The dog got mange. Quit playing. Yeah. <laughs> And fix the shit. It's only, you know, a couple dollars a bottle. And however long it take you to drive there and back. <laughs> but it's well worth your dog. It ain't a hot spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, all right. Let me see. You got any more questions in the chat? We ran through them. Uh, uh, live life real ass. What, back in the day, what weight and marriage did OTC have? And I say... Same they do now. You coming off the couch. I mean, you cheated your dog because if he won, you could have just put him in shape and got a real W. But you too pussy or don't know what you're doing and just tricked them off. Or you needed some bread right quick and you found a dummy. And again, you end up cheating a good dog. OTCs don't mean shit to me, but off the couch. You know? Yeah. Fuck out of here. OT- <laughs> OTCs to me is just a roll. To me, it's a roll. Yeah, it's just a money roll, which is dumb. You shortchanging your dog when you're doing that bullshit, man. You know, nigga win three OTCs. You could have put him in shape, and he, now he a champion instead of just a fucking roll dog. You feel me? 
don't cheat your dog, man. It's not fair to the animal at the end I of the day. Hey, I saw the funniest shit. I was looking on that um the online pet shit, right? I forgot what dog it was. I ain't trying to throw nobody into the bus or nothing, but it was some shit on there, and that shit said uh grand champion OTC. <laughs> I said, What yeah, the fuck is th- you can't do that, bro? You can't just change nah, the rules and shit, yeah, man. There, there what no the fuck you talking thing. about? Yeah, yeah. It's two two reasons why they do that. They're lazy or they don't know how to condition. You know, that's it. Uh, and, and it don't even mean it's true. You can put whatever number you want because nobody can really check it. You know, it's not like yeah. a real show. You know, it's just, no. Nah. If you do that, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, back in the day, people would do it just to get some quick cash. I did it a couple of times. You know, it wasn't really yeah, my that's, thing. Yeah, that's a money yeah. roll. You know, you, just, yeah, you need some all, bread. Yeah. The family yeah, got to eat. You yeah, know? yeah. But they don't count for nothing. They don't really mean anything. You know, there's no rules, no weight, no name, no ref, no nothing. You know, it's just, you know. Yeah, that's mean, why I say you cheating the dog You when you do that because you could have, mm-hmm. you know, got him something mm-hmm. official and, you know, gave him his just due. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just exactly. a little, you might have some bragging rights, but it's, it's like the equivalent of what happened in the gym and sparring and boxing and shit. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Until you do it on the big stage in the ring, it don't matter. Yeah, exactly. You know, kind of, you know, see, motherfucker get you in school, but when it count, you know, it's a whole different animal now. Yeah, he yeah. grew up and he way different in shape than he is, you know, not. So yeah, yeah, yeah. man, don't fuck that OTC shit, bro. Yeah, I, I call it the backyard boogie. That's all it is, you know. Again, you cheating yourself and the dog. If you're good enough to do that, you know, if you don't know how to put them in shape, find somebody who do, you know. You just yeah. you, you be the motherfucker yeah. who got a good dog, you know. Yeah. Ain't you know, nothing wrong a, with that. No, a there ain't. There, a lot of people did that. Yeah, they did. They, they you know, they, they bred the dog, raise the dog, whatever, and they get somebody to work it for them, you know, or they get, get you know, or they, a lot of them were sweet, you know, I use it one time, this guy use him another time, another guy, you know. Yeah, you know. see, and I respect that dude because he know his limitations in the game. Right, you right. know, I could get this far with it when it come to that shit. Yeah. I'm not yeah. that good. Here, pass it yeah. off to somebody who is. Exactly. I even know one guy, he's a pretty well-known breeder, at least on the West Coast. He, he couldn't even watch the dogs roll, you know. It, it'd make him sick to his stomach. So he would go off, he'd get on his tractor and r- ride around, you know. A dog would be going at it, and he'd holler at him, 15 minutes, you know, 20 minutes, okay, 30 minutes. Okay, that's good enough. He couldn't even watch him, you know. And, right. You know, you can think whatever you want, but at least he had someone else doing for him, you know, so he could have some kind of measure. Yeah, yeah he real enough to be like, I mean, ain't no, yeah. don't be ashamed yeah. of who you are. Exactly. You know, you got to be yourself because everybody else is, yeah. is taking. They already they self. You can't be me. I can't yeah. be schoolboy. You feel yeah. He always already a schoolboy. <laughs> Well, you know what some people some people do too. A lot of people stay in um, your lane. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a lot of people don't know uh, how to properly put on a show, and they they do them off the chains and shit like that. And then what they do is after the off the chain situation, you know, what I mean, they don't like I said they don't they don't know nothing about no ref. They don't know nothing about handling the dog. They just let the dog do whatever, right? Then after it, that's when they uh, write up some little fake ass contract to make it count as like it was some real and shit. Yeah, maybe do it. It's yeah. a lot of a lot of people have done that historically too. It ended yeah, up. Yeah, uh, Kelly Jack up- did that with Poncho. That's where Poncho get his one time winner status from was rolling into a shit, but he turned around and hooked the dog and lose to a dog named Pup who was a fucking puppy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that shit started out as a, a bump. Went to a long haul, then they was betting money on it. By the time Cali Jack get his hands on the story of one time winner, like you left the part out where you got shocked though, too, up there. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. yeah. If you know, you know where it went down, that you know who socked him. The dude who owned the house socked him. You feel me? Yeah. And he live up to his name, you know? Yeah. Well, even way in the past where you see these, you know, 16 time winners, 24 time winners. 
I'm not going to deny that maybe they didn't win that many, but they weren't all contract matches. Right, they right. Yeah, they wasn't put into condition and, 24 yeah. times. No, no. no. And they weren't, and they didn't even go against Bulldogs every time. Could have been any kind of dog. Bull Terriers, yeah. all that shit. Well, yeah, for German, German Shepherd, Lassie. Yeah. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Because, like, like for instance, Tudor. Oh, the, oh they said Lassie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To, to, Tudor and and uh, Art Nemechek, they had a cockpit, right? So they would do their, they would have their derbies or have their hack fights. After that, they they'd have dog fights, and it'd be anybody challenging anybody with any kind of dog you brought. Could have been a Rottweiler, could have been a Shep, could have been a Mutt, could have been anything. If the dog would fight, some people would do them. There's no weights, there's no nothing. So, you know, it was just a way during the depression and all that to make money. It was just, you know, they were just making money. But when you see 24 time winner, I guarantee you he wasn't conditioned 24 times. It's not, it, yeah. In his whole oh, life, no. you, can't, you can't do that with the dog, you know. Hell no, man. Like, fuck, no. It takes a dog a long time to recover, for one, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if you look back in history, way back, and I'm talking 1800s, early 1800s. There's a dog. I forgot his name. And the caption reads, 109-time winner. You know, and, and I guarantee you there's people going to believe that that dog won 109 times. Right. It's, bull, it's bullshit. It's people, right. you know, they believe They might have been counting, like, the rat races and shit back nah, then. Could have been, yeah, but this, he, he, was, he was a pit dog. So they, yeah, they, hell they, no. They probably, yeah, they probably nah. was putting on... See, they, they put on those spectacles and shit where, because, yeah, you know, yeah. dudes, dudes be doing that shit in the hood. They'll have... Uh, that, you know, white, have that white that white thing shit. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Dudes yeah. be having, like, in the hood, they'll have, like, uh, a nice little dog or something like that, and they know it's, you know, most people in their neighborhood ain't got shit fucking with it, you know what I mean? But they'll, they'll talk their way into, you know, some dumbass dude who got some uh, blue bully or something, he don't know what he got, and, and he, get, he get talked into putting his shit out there, bam, he gets smacked. Then the dude down the street got a Doberman. Bam, he gets smacked. And then they keep just adding this shit to the fucking record. It's like, bro, come on, man. That's like fucking, like back in the day in boxing, right? And I, I love old school boxing. We appreciate the history. But like, if you're fighting every weekend, okay, you got, first of all, you got to be tough. But also, I know that your level of competition is different. All right? Like, when Muhammad Ali was fighting Joe Frazier, he wasn't fighting him every Saturday. Believe that shit. Yeah. You know hell no. You ain't fighting just lining up all the killers in your town and fighting them like, hell no. You wouldn't be fighting every week. Yeah, you would fight one week and be healing up for three more weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For real. Joe, Joe Frazier took years off of Ali's life, man. That shit yeah. took yeah. years off of his life. Yeah, so, yeah, them dudes be funny. Uh, no, nah, even if it is two people and... I don't know no self-respecting ref uh, live life real who would even condone that bullshit, you know? Yeah. Uh, OTC with a ref? How? There ain't no self-respecting dog man would ref that shit, man. Yeah. They cuss both of y'all out and tell you y'all both stupid. Put the motherfuckers yeah. in shape. That shit yeah. don't count. It still don't count. No matter what you do, it's said a wait and a date. Yeah. You know? In That's what count. Yeah. So if the motherfuckers ain't coming in in shape, ain't nobody putting no forfeit up, none of that. No, none of that shit count, man. I don't care how you dress it up. It's still a goddamn ugly fucking bitch. <laughs> I don't care what you put on her. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm always skeptical when I hear stories like, oh, yeah, you know, on our second, we went into such and such. And, uh, uh, you know, we were giving up. Uh, we were going uphill eight pounds. Like, man, who the fuck going to agree to eight, eight pounds uphill unless it's some bullshit off the chain? Like, nobody uh, is going to fucking contract that shit. Yeah, we're going to Man, and if pounds. you show up eight pounds overweight, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Give me my goddamn money and get out of here, man. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. tripping. You're doing it on purpose, you know? Yeah, you, <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> you, we know we went at 50 and you come in 58. Hell no, I'll give you my money. That's facts. You got to do that on purpose. There ain't no way yeah. you can cover eight pounds of weight. Oh, just, tell just you scale gotta, broke, motherfucker. Yeah. Well, you got an hour to work that weight off of it. <laughs> and I still won't do it. I just want to see your dog drain now. <laughs> Bitch, you playing. That's way too much weight. Fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I'll I go. Just, just take his cutters out of his mouth. Knock them two motherfuckers out. Yeah. 
they, yeah. they'll, make, they'll be even. Give me one off the top and one off the bottom on the opposite <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah. What the I seen fuck? A, I, seen a, I seen a hack fight and the dude, one, one of the birds had only had one eye, right? So, so yeah. they made a they made a fight real quick, and and the other guy, his bird had two eyes, so he put duct tape on one, one of the bird's eyes. Oh you know, shit! To make, God damn! <laughs> make it either. That's yeah. fair and square, though. I guess yeah, shit. Yeah, I, I guess you know. I mean, yeah, the bird guys is different anyway, though. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, though. Yeah, All right, yeah. now we even, motherfucker. Yeah. Who won? The two-eyed bird or the one-eyed one? The the, the two-eyed bird won. You know how come? Because <laughs> as, as it went on, the tape fell off. You know? Yeah, he's like, yeah. Oh, I can see you now, bitch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's funny. I want to ask. People, people uh, do, you know, they'll do uh, crazy shit for fifty dollars. You know. <laughs> I want to ask yeah. Schoolboy. You know, in your time, how often did you see, or how often do you think? Uh, good dog man, you know what I'm saying? Well known good dog man. How often do you think they they kind of like just uh took dogs for granted and just went through them and, and probably lost out on some good dogs? Well, like, you ruined, know, like ruined them early is what I mean. Yeah, that's a good question because you know, again, uh, as you're coming up and even you may even keep that standard, you know, you hear all these stories three day game tests and 10, you know, three dog game tests and two hours in this and that. And people will take that part and think every time you test your dog or every time you do something, you got to see them go through that. that. That's bullshit. So yeah, a lot of dogs got ruined. And as they get older and, and more experienced, they regret doing that. And they'll tell you themselves, I probably got rid of a lot of good dogs doing that because they did too much. It doesn't mean they pushed them till they quit, but they ruined them or the dog died or you know, they knocked all their teeth out or they broke their splintered their legs, and you know, again in the past, but they just they fucked the dog up. And and uh, uh, you, you can't, you know, you should. It, it's like I say, if you know game this when you see it, you don't question it. You don't you don't have to have a near death or to see what you need to see to know they're not going to quit. You right. know, and and. and uh, you know, if you do it too young, yeah, you can ruin them. You can break their spirit. And and even older dogs, you can. You can do that, you know. So my thing is don't do that. But, yeah, a lot of them, they do get, you know, they almost did that with Hunter Red. You know, Crenshaw saw him roll. He left the room because it was just, it got to the point where it was cruel. He didn't quit, and it took a lot to save him. But, you know, at, at some point, you don't have to do that. You know, they just kept letting it go and letting it go and letting it go. It's too much, you know. Yeah. And, if you, you know, if you don't know, if you don't see what you're looking for, once you get good at it, like me, 15 minutes when I was out there like that, then yeah. you don't know what you're looking at. Because you put the right shit on the right dog, it ain't going to take that long to see if he going to mud out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And And, you know. I tell people this too, you know, with my foundation dog, what I started out with, I went through a bunch of dogs and I was hard on them and you do have to be set up to save them. But after that, and this is more common than people re would realize is experienced guys. They don't skull drag their dogs. They don't do that. Once you got your family family set and you know what you're looking at and you see the traits you're supposed to, I just looked at them. Can they win? Whatever I put in front of them, it, uh, are they good enough to beat it? Because I, I know the bottom is there. The gameness is there, you know, and, and I see certain things, you know, that, that tell me that they're just like their ancestors. So a lot yep. of times I look at a dog a couple of times, three times, sometimes one time. One time I didn't even look at the dog. I bred him. Somebody else raised him. I matched him. He won. I never saw him bite nothing but his feed bowl. It's just, yeah. you know, it just, you taking chances and all like that. And people say, no, I got to see their game. Their game. Well, most people, once they see their game, the dog dead, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, or got them, or forced into brood status if they make it. Yeah. And that's a yeah. good segue point I wanted to breed up is knowing the difference between <laughs> a match dog and a brood dog. Like, you know, professional motherfuckers at the highest level ain't skull dragging they match dogs. No. They want to see if this dog got what it takes to win. 
but the mm -hmm. dogs they want to breed a family of dogs off of might get a little bit more time on them. Yeah, no, you know, that's a, a little good point. bit more rougher. So yeah, yeah. you gotta yeah. know, yeah. especially yeah. when you're going to buy a dog from a breeder, if you want a dog that's gonna perform or you want to build a family off these dogs. Because most yeah. of the time he could he would be honest with you and tell you, all right, I got this bitch. She inbred off this my best producing shit. Boom. Yeah. You know, yeah. she she ain't then, worth yeah, a fuck if, in a yeah. you know yeah. for if competition, you, you, but she gonna right. produce. Right. If you were going into good competition back then, at some point during one of their shows, you're gonna see that gameness, win or lose. You know. But you're right. It with my with stuff that I wasn't gonna match broodstock. Like one female, I just held her back because she broke her teeth and she was the only female in the litter. Those dogs, I'm rougher on them. I will see what I need to see because I'm not going to compete with them, but they have to be worthy enough to breed. And yeah, if you're going to build a house on it, you're not going to yeah. build your house on sand. You're going to yeah. build it on concrete and rebar. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, in that respect, yeah, I was tougher on them. But, again, you hear people, you know, I, you know, even back then, you know, I, I test them this and that. Well, when you down to it you know if you're that hard on them you got to be ready to save them afterwards too and there's very yeah, few exactly. people say will tell you you know i had my setup and i had the ivm i had to do this and that you know and they made it they did they don't say that so i don't know how they're yeah. skull dragging skull if you're gonna do that you might as well just match them you know yeah yeah, yeah. for real because that. that's the care that's a match. After care yeah. what's that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you yeah. ain't just gonna yeah. put no dirt on it and take a nap with this shit. And yeah, yeah. It, you will learn how to suture yeah. and all that, you know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, everybody just be mindful of that, you know. Yeah, if you want a brood dog, say that. If you want a competitive dog, say that. Just you know. Yeah, I know a lot of people who want a down breeders, but you know you wanted a a brood dog, but was mad because the bitch not a mad dog quality. You didn't ask for that, dummy. Yeah. You told you looking for a brood dog. You tried to match it, and lo, she ain't quit or nothing. She just wasn't match quality. That's your fault, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot know of the dog. difference between what you got and what you want, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's, 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 yeah, people, we lose that term game dogs and stuff, but it's a lot of game dogs that's not match quality. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. Like, they game, they, they could be game to the core, but but don't have no ability or, or they might lack yeah, uh, yeah. mouth and you figure, you know, yeah. you can still use especially that dog. A, a lot of, especially a lot of heavily inbred dogs or just inbred dogs, you know. When, mm -hmm. when you say they carry the traits of their family, you know, they may have the structure, they may have, uh, have the intensity, they may have uh, 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 strength or speed, something like that, but they don't have a lot of ability. Sometimes they don't have a lot of mouth. There are some that, that do, like, Grand champion, Miss Ray, she was father-daughter bred. She was a badass, you know. Uh, Havana Boys champion, Budweiser, he was inbred Jeep. You know, he was a good match dog. Most of them are not like that, you know. So, so, but if they carry certain traits that you want to carry forward and they're good enough to be bred, then, yeah, do that. You know, you could cross them. You could lion breed them, something like that, you know. But when you start heavily inbreeding, you're going to lose – a lot of ability, you're going to lose a lot of, you're just looking for other things, you know, that they carry within their family of dogs, you know. It yeah, that's be, what I was uh, <laughs> telling the young homie uh, Blitz, you know, like he got a good bitch that's bred up heavy on a good popular dog. Now, I was just, you know, telling him it might be better to make your cross first if she proved to be worth being bred. That way yeah, you ain't right. got to worry about the inbred problems later on down the line, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, because she already, you know, pretty tight bred up on that dog. And you're going to go to a dog who tight bred on the dog. And she, I mean, it looked good on paper, but papers ain't in the pit, you know? Mm -hmm. That's indeed. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's why, like, uh, certain dogs, man, you got to – you just got to know, I guess, what you're looking at and what yeah. you want to do with yeah. the dogs and shit, you know what I mean? And you know, and uh, one guy, he, he prefers inbred dogs because he's going to cross them anyway. That's what he likes to deal with. He keeps them tight. He kept them tight. He don't really have dog no more. But that, that was his thing. And that's an old way of doing things, too. Some people would have two lines of dogs, you know, keep them tight and then cross them together every so often to make his match dog. You know, he keep them tight, keep the lines, each one separate, each one tight, put them together, and then he gets his match yes, dog. Yes, sir. Like 
uh, you know, that's a that's an old way of I doing it those. too. You know, I like them inbred outcross dogs, man. Yeah, that that, that yeah. that's a nice formula. If it works in that family tree and you could pull it off, man, those yeah. inbred outcross yeah. breedings, explosions. Yeah, yeah typically it, they work good because if they're done right, then you got the best of each family. Right. Been, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and if it's been done before and you just continue it, it's gonna work. You know, like like uh, let's say you have a you know one side uh, Eli dogs and the other side you got uh, you know Carver or you got Bolio or you know you, you keep those two sides straight. You know Eli Carver, Eli Bolio, or if you got Jocko Red Boy or Jeep you know, Red Boy or whatever, you know. Keep them tight, cross them, boom, you got your match. Uh, boom, every, you know, whatever. So often. Yeah, more times than not, you know, every dog yeah. ain't going to make it, but the ones you're going to get <laughs> right. there more times than not, you know. Yeah. I always remember every dog throw curves. So, yeah, don't be yeah. going expecting an all mm -hmm. game litter like Jeep litter was. That's yeah. far and few yeah. in between. <laughs> You yeah, know? yeah, that was, that's yeah. Story and, right and there. you're gonna, you, you know, if you're successful, you're gonna have those type of breeds. You just ain't gonna have them all the time. And if people honestly kept track, I mean, really kept track of every dog that they did, if you're honest, you you're gonna realize you you you're getting rid, you're culling more dogs than you're keeping. It's right. just as you go along, your percentage of the ones you keep is gonna come up. Little, little yeah, it's time. gonna be like the the keep yeah. part of it, like it's gonna yeah. reverse. You right. be like, God right. damn, I'm keeping too many dogs mm -hmm. now. The cur pile yeah. getting smaller than a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but to have them hundred percent all the time. No, that ain't never gonna happen. I don't care who you are. It didn't hey, happen with no. Shooter. Didn't happen with Kobe Lightner. Didn't happen with Boyles Carver. None of them. Uh, yeah. Look how many times it happened with you. You bred. 11 dogs, nine made it. Out of how many yeah. dogs and how many breedings, though, did it take exactly. before you got that blessing? Right, right. Let me, and let me I, had, I had oh, one litter, one litter of four dogs. All four of them made the pit. All four of them were game. I bred the female. They produced. That was one time in all them breeding. And that last litter, like I said, nine, nine out of 11, that was one time. It didn't, you know, there were other breedings I made. One breeding I made. Most of them wouldn't even scratch. I got rid of them. They would bite like hell, bite like hell. They were fast. They would not scratch. So that one's out the gate. Other times I get one dog, two dogs out of the litter, the rest of them dung pile. So that you got to be honest and keep that in perspective. You know? Hell yeah. That shit don't happen every day or often. But often when they do, it. respect it. You know, yeah, we yeah, all yeah, get in terms. We yeah, all get run. blessed. <laughs> yeah. Run with it when you got it. And when you don't, just accept that's the norm. You know, that's yep. what happened. Now, what you was about to ask, uh, eight? I was going to say, man, um, I don't know if this is enough. Okay, let's talk about it from a historical standpoint. How important is it to uh, put your dog in the right hand, your, your puppy in the right hands? Because, um, you know, I was thinking about this because, like, if you're producing, and you're going through all this work as a breeder, all this coloring and all this stuff to fin get this finished product, okay? I mean, I ain't trying to be an asshole, but any kind of a waste for that finished product to be, like, sitting in somebody's kitchen, like, licking up spaghetti on the floor and shit? Like, I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't breed it for that, and that's just one of the downsides of just selling to anybody and everybody. I was talking to the brother Moji earlier about that. A lot of the times, the good dogs end up in the wrong hands, and then the people who should have those good dogs end up with the curves out of that breeding, you know, like the, yeah. the good, the, them dogs usually don't end up in the hands that they should, you know, yeah. now you could avoid that by being real selective and only picking motherfuckers who going to do what they say and say what they do. And you can honor that shit. You want to get them guys, the dogs more likely than not. But if you got a family to feed, I understand, you know, yeah, that shit is better than robbing a motherfucker if you gotta yeah, sell a yeah. dog. But yeah. a lot of time you're gonna sell a dog to a motherfucker who don't let the dog just eat spaghettios off the floor and that's it. Fuck yeah, around, right. get them neutered and shit. You're like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> but you know and that like, would have been the next grand champion. <laughs> and that's why I be thinking, like, because like I, I know like my, my grandfather, he he really didn't like selling his dogs to, to people. He was like greedy, like we didn't have the room to keep all the dogs, but he would strategically place his dogs that he wanted to keep with people he know he can get the dogs back from. 
You know what I mean? He was strategically placing with people. All right, cousin such and such, uncle such and such. This dog going to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? It's some yard back there. And then he would later on come and get the dog. If one of the dogs on his yard don't work out, he'd go get that other dog. You know what I mean? He would do shit like that. But, like, um, I always wondered, like, do the breeders feel like like they cheat themselves or do they feel like, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know how to word it without sounding like an yeah. asshole. Well, the, I, the, yeah. You know, you, you, you can get, give or sell a dog to somebody and they can screw it up, you know, even yeah. a good dog. You know, I think yeah. Tudor said, you know, he, you give Spike to some idiot, he'll fuck him up. You know, that can happen. But, you know, and, and you know, most people do sell dogs throughout their life, you know. It's just a matter of who you sell them to. Like me, if I, I, I could say basically all the dogs, the few that I sold and the ones that I gave away, I at least gave them to people that were active. And, and if you were my friend, whatever the dog did worked out or didn't work out, I didn't question it. You know, they know what they're doing. If the dog quit, I don't want him back. He knows what to do with it. And I'll give him another dog or, or whatever. Right. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not something that, that, you know, I'm going to break up a friendship over because they got basically the state, same standards I do. You know, if they quit, you get rid of them. If not, you use them, you know? And, and again, if you're my friend and I give you a dog, they're not going to breed it out to someone else. They're not going to sell it behind my back. And I don't do this. I would do this. You know, I, I wouldn't do that either. So they give me a dog. I use them. You know, I got some from OTK and I got some from uh, uh, PB and, and, and like that. And, and uh, when I was finished, I sent them their dog back, heal them up, get them ready, cleaned up. They're healthy and all that. And just send them the dog back. You know, I didn't breed them behind their back unless they told me I could. Uh, uh, or I didn't sell them behind their back and say, oh, the dog died and all that shit. No. In fact, I'm going to do a video on that later in my group. But, but yeah, you, you sometimes you don't know what's going to happen to them. So my attitude was, you know, if I sell somebody a dog, once it leaves my yard, it's on them, whatever they do with it. So if I don't, if I'm going to have second thoughts, then I better not sell that person a dog. You know, but if you're doing it, the people that you know are active, they're pretty straight up, you know, it, it reflects on you. You you can do good with your dogs, but I looked at it like, how can they do, how would they do in someone else's hands? And if they do good with them, fine. If they quit, it's no loss, you know, uh, which that didn't happen too often. But, but you know, it's people that at least I could trust if they were active, they would do the right thing by them, you know. Uh, an active guy that that that's was competing back then, he's not going to screw the dog up, you know. He got a gift or he bought it on the cheap because I didn't charge a lot. So he's going to do right by the dog, you know. They're not going right. to, you know, they're not going to, hopefully they're not going to just go there and go, you know, roll them and kill them and all like that. You know, they're just dumb, you know, to do that. But, uh, yeah, you don't, you, you really don't know what's going to happen to them, but it's better people you trust. If you just sell them to the general public, they gone and whatever they do, they do, you know. Right. Yeah. I was wondering that, you know what I'm saying? I was, like, cause I was just thinking, like, you know, it got to be hard on the for a breeder to go through years and years of going through dogs, and then you can't even really yeah, yeah. enjoy right. the yeah. fucking, you know, enjoy your right. the, the right. fruits of your labor, you know what I mean? It's yeah, especially if you don't have a lot of dogs, you know, you're not going to be letting them all out. I tried to keep all the dogs in my litter, and a lot of them I did. They didn't go anywhere, you know. And, and But if you got 100 dogs, it's a little easier to cut some loose, you know. You, you know, you just you got so many, it doesn't really matter. And some people are just breeders. They, they look to, to recap on what they spent and all that, and I don't, I don't blame them for that. But it, it's a little bit easier when you got a bunch of them where – to where you just have a handful, you know. Yeah, all yeah. facts. Yes, indeed. Yeah, be, co- co- be cur- strict about, be strict about, be strict about who you deal with. You know what I mean? Like, I always had the mindset: if you chase the dream, money will come. You know what I mean? If right. if you if you keep if you keep it honest with your dogs and put the time and the money and the years into to your dogs and your family tree, 
people are going to want to fuck with you. Money will come. You know what I mean? But if you go into this ever thinking you're going to chase money, it, it, the dog, it, you're barely covering what you're spending on the dogs, keeping it 100. You got to love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody in the... Everybody in the everybody in the food chain love what they love. You got your breeders, your conditioners, your handlers. You got your your normal your normal pet owners that just want to have a good dog. So right. you need to in- interview who you're dealing with. If somebody who wants to come along and they just want to have a good dog, and they're gonna work them and do what they want to do, buy more power, man. They want to do ADBA shows or whatever they're gonna do. Know who you're dealing with. You got people who are active and who are who want to be hunting with their dogs. Accommodate what they're asking for. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta be mindful of what you have and accommodate what the person wants from you if you're dealing. I like to keep a small circle of people around, but that's what works out. And then you can actually see your family tree producing. You know the information you're getting back, and it's easier to spot things. Because you have all of these dogs on the ground that you produced. So you know your traits. You know when things are going wrong. You know when to implicate an outcross. I love what Mr. Garcia alluded to. Don't wait till shit gets fucked up to do an outcross. I did my little outcross breedings over the years and everybody was asking why. Why wait till the shit gets fucked up? Let's try to build forward with what we got. So it's, it's, it's levels to it. But all I can say is just be cognizant of who you deal with. Feel out. People do not chase money. All money ain't good money. I mean, yeah, and it's not a lot of money in that's... these dogs. Like, nah. the motherfuckers who do get good money is not usually people who you would kick it with in real life. They're usually assholes and dickheads. Like, in any business that's successful, that's making money, them people ain't friendly. They ain't there for the love of nothing but the bread. So they just sell you anything. Your mass production won't give you papers on the shit. Yes. Tell yeah. you can't breed it. Like, get the fuck out that's, of here, homie. Yeah. People, yeah. people selling you they, they curb pile and shit. That's what yeah, they you know. Like, motherfuckers be selling you they curb pile and, and you know what I mean? And that's why they don't want to put them dogs in good hands and shit because they don't want nobody looking at them motherfuckers. Find out exactly. So, yeah. You, it's a lot of shit to be mindful for in these dogs. It's just As long as you pay attention, you know. Try to figure out when a motherfucker bullshitting you and when he keeping it real with you, and just move forward accordingly, bro. Yeah, I know people like that. People they keep their good shit and they sell their curb pile, like you know what I'm saying. They they cold pile, I should say. The dogs that's supposed to be cold at the program, motherfucker be selling them shits, man. Because that's why I was thinking like, damn, that's crazy. Like, if you got like a housewife who just like, hey, you know, I'm here by myself. I got five thousand to spend. I want a good dog. You mean to tell me this fucking guy ain't gonna be like, hey, I got a good dog for you. He ain't gonna work out for me, but he might work out for you to sit around the house and do jack shit. Give me fuck, give me that five. I won't even charge you five. Give me four. But that's what show breeders did for decades. The show breeders wouldn't sell. They bet the the show breeders would never sell their show dogs. They sell all the shit that wouldn't that's not show quality for ten thousand dollars. Just off the strength that you could possibly you can possibly breed this shit. That's what they, the way they looked at it. Like, oh, what if you went to another person and got a stud or something off of it? Show community is famous for doing that shit. They, and they and that and they don't work. Them motherfuckers there, they don't they do dogs 24-7 because that's the type of income. They're basically selling all of the dogs that aren't show quality and they're just cracking heads. They, they do yeah, they the they grow and grow, but they selling you the Reggie, you know? Yeah, they yeah. smoking on the dro and getting paid <laughs> off the Reggie. Like, nigga, got, they I got, want to smoke dro too. Stop selling me this Reggie, man. <laughs> they, got, they got the, uh, they got that motherfucking uh, 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 OG cushion in, in the in the basement, and they, and they giving you the master cushion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me see here. I, I fuck with master cushion. I ain't gonna hate no master cushion. Hey, uh, Zachariah in the super chat. What to do, family? Much love, much appreciation. Says, do y'all have a private uh, group on Facebook? Schoolboy got a Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's called uh, Schoolboy Lives Two, n- number two, because uh, I had another one. I I forgot my password, so I just made it. <laughs> couldn't get yeah. back into it. You know, I didn't have no admins or nothing to add me back. So, anyways, but you kind of got to come with references, you know, so, or or mm-hmm. if I know you, you know, like uh, who put that up? Uh, Exactly. If I know you, I'll, I'll add you. Usually, 
for me to add to you, we got to become friends first, you know. And usually, you know, people add people almost every day, and I go through it. And if you're, I look at your friends list. If I know your friends, you know, they vouch for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll add you. If I don't yeah, really how we know, we do you, it out west. You know, we got to yeah. know where your mama stay, where you from, yeah. where your grandma stay, homie. Exactly. <laughs> so, that's so how we gonna instance, know that's you. <laughs> yeah. So, for instance, if you let let's say your friends list is Leander Daigle, Coy, Havana Chico, Havana Danny or OTK or something like that, you know, I might give him a call. Hey, you know this fool? Yeah, he's a good guy. Okay, I'll add you. If not, I'll just look at it and see, you know, look at your uh, uh, group and who you got in there and who you're friends with. And sometimes I may not know you, but I know who you are. And just by that, I'll, I'll add you, you know. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, but I get, I get them every day. Just uh, contact me on Messenger. Or if you know somebody that's in the group already, have them add you. And then I'll check the friends list, and then I can add you that way, you know. But, uh, people ask me where you get that name. Schoolboy lives, you know. And and there was a kid. In fact, he's the one who had straws off a of big red back in the day. And he called me up, and I said hello. And the first thing he said was, "Is this schoolboy?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "You're still alive." I say, yeah, <laughs> fool, I'm talking to you, you know. So that I use that. That's that's how I got the group name, you know. Yeah, I'm still alive, motherfucker. I'm here, you know. You talking to me, you know? So uh, a little more gray, but I'm still here. Yeah, uh, yeah got like the grandpa that. weight on, but yeah, I'm still the yeah, same yeah, OG, yeah, well, yeah. fucker. <laughs> yeah, my mom did that one time. She called me up. And I go, I go, hello. She goes, oh, you're home. I go, no, I'm not home, mom. She click, she hang up. <laughs> and then I, she, I call her back. I said, mom, why you hang up? She goes, well, you said you weren't home. I said, mom, you called my house. I answered the phone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just kidding with you. So I she just, she out asshole you. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, then motherfucker, yeah, you don't want to yeah. talk? Fine. I know what yeah, number yeah. I called. Click. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that, that's part of my humor. I get my humor from my dad. It's twisted, but kept me alive. I even asked my wife after several years, why'd you marry me? You know, I ain't rich. I ain't talented. I ain't got no money. I ain't got good looks, nothing. She goes, you make me laugh. I said, oh, fuck it. That's good enough. I make you laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you got self, man, man. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, so, huh? yeah that's, what, that's all I'm going to hang on to. Yeah, that's I make you laugh. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a, a, a motherfucker. That's some, that's some real shit, though. Yeah. yeah. That's an underrated quality, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. motherfuckers forget about that kind of shit. If you can, yeah, you can, you yeah. can you make a woman laugh, show her a good time and shit. Yeah, yeah. That 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 uh breaks down her defense mechanism, so you can get yeah. right to the action. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. You gotta watch I ain't got watch funny motherfuckers, shit, but I got ready. jokes and dick. I got yeah. you. The jokes <laughs> is gonna get you the dick. Watch. Yeah, it's <laughs> easy. It's easy. It's easy. Let me tell you, man. If you can stay with your old lady for years and years. It's easy. You don't have to court nothing, buy nothing, do nothing. It just whenever you, you just got to remember the important days, like birthdays yeah, yeah. and anniversary. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. else is smooth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And most yeah. of the time, they don't want nothing on both of them days. You know, yeah, no. they yeah. just want the acknowledgement that your fucking bum ass remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sim Sim Miller in the super chat. Much love and much appreciation, fam. Thanks for the jewels, fellas. God is good. It's peace, Luke. Oh, uh, yeah. Already, good. this, you know, this ain't for the season, dog, man. This shit is for the cats who just trying to get in it and rather see you get a good foothold on it now than have to go through a lot of the shit that we had to go through. It take a lot of time. You know, there's other bloodlines out there. Some we talk about, most we don't because people still using them, you know. But the ones y'all ask about, you know, we'll let you know what we know about them. But yeah. The further you get in, though, the more you'll start to learn and see, like, the name brand shit get a hat handed to it a lot of the times in the big league, you know. It's usually motherfuckers who done bred the name brand shit with they style of dogs and took it to the next level that you don't see. A lot of those mm-hmm. guys listen but don't comment, you know, so just hang around, keep it solid, you oh, know, yeah. and well, reach some, out to you. <laughs> it's some motherfuckers in this chat with some shit, believe that. There's some motherfuckers in the chat with some shit that's smacking up shit. Yeah, it's smack all the dogs yes, that the lives we named. They done run them shits over. 
they weak yeah. as shit would right now, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's we just ain't yeah, talking about OGs them. That's, listen to this shit. Yeah, yeah. You got to get to the advanced level, and that's only come from being in the field. This is just the one on one right here, you know. Right. And most of the dogs we talk about here is, is bloodlines. Or long uh, gone, right? Right. Yeah. Like these are oh, these are old bloodlines and stuff. There's people out here today that got stuff that is, uh, you know, the first six generations. You ain't gonna recognize none of them dogs unless you've been out there. You gonna be yeah. like, man, who the fuck is this? Who was champion this? Who was two time winner this? And then who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. But they've been smacking shit in their region, killing everything. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Even in my group, there's a lot of old heads. There a lot of friends. You know, most of my real friends in the dogs is on there and they don't comment, you know, they follow along and they tell me, Hey Richard, you know, I, I'm just, you know, I like the group and I'm going to follow along and this and that, you know, do I have to come? No, you don't have to comment. Don't say shit. That's not a requirement. Cause I see that in other groups, you know, if you don't comment, we're going to cut you loose. This and that. That's not what my group's about. And I respect them old guys. A lot of them I've been friends for 30, 40 years. They're in there. They might say something like something or, make a small comment, but they're not required to give any information or any of their keeps or breeding technique, none of that stuff. It's just they like the group. They like to follow along. They're my friends. They appreciate what I do. And, you know, they, they like reading the posts and all that stuff and seeing the pictures of dogs and all that, stealing the pictures of dogs. I don't care. You steal any. If it's out there in my group and you want the picture, take it, man. I don't care whether it's mine or someone else's. It's public in that respect. So, you know, if you don't want it, your picture taken, don't post it up there, you know. But, yeah. but yeah, in the my dogs group, I yeah. posted was my dogs, and I had to steal them from online. Shit, I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, stole yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> I had the yeah. picture right now I'm using. I had to steal when I took the picture. That's yeah. in front of the yeah. homie yeah. out. Yeah. In the neighborhood. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right there in the hood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm happy sometimes because I, I lost most of my pictures and a lot of my stuff. You know, I had tons of it, you know. And I've gotten a lot of it back, and I've got other stuff that, that I didn't know I had. My old lady hid it, and she forgot about it. And we found it years later, which I'm thankful for. That's another reason I stay married. But, but uh, you know, they, uh, uh, a lot of the – even my own dog, you know, I didn't, I didn't have the pictures. I just, you know, uh, people sent them to me. They have them, and I'm grateful, you know. So, you know, it's only a, a handful compared to what I used to have, but I'm glad at least I have those. So. You know, you don't have to be active in my group. You could. Some people just like to follow along and see. You know, then when I meet them, we talk about it. You know, say, hey, that was a good post. You know, good. Yeah, because it do be like some good questions in there and different yeah. people's perspectives on there. You got a couple yeah. would be know it alls in there, but you can yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. You, you can know, tell. You, you yeah, tell. you ain't. Yeah. yeah, you ain't never yeah. came off your fucking yard with nothing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and that's why I mean, man. That's you know, that's yeah. that's that's my big thing. That's why I try to like. It'd be hard for me to go in them groups and shit because people be talking so much shit, man. And it it, it, it be the people who you know ain't do, like, bro. You look like you got a fucking Kobe yeah. dog from nineteen 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 or some shit. Yeah. And you talking shit like about you know dog clean as hell. Like, yeah, I'm out yeah. here. These guys, I never seen these guys out here before. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm yeah, like, where, out, out where? Outside of your apartments, motherfucker. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, <laughs> yeah. you, got a, you got a fucking Staffordshire Terrier, nigga. Yeah, brand new. About? This motherfucker never had one crash. Like I said earlier, this motherfucker out of thirty dogs, only two won, and they weigh in the fourth. Shut yeah. up, nigga. Yeah. Just stay in your lane with the shit. Respect what you got, but don't front. You, at least not yeah. to me. You don't got to. Yeah, I just I like talking. Yeah. I like I like talking. My expectations is high. If you gonna show me a pedigree, I want to see the parents as winners, the grandparents as winners, or producers, and they siblings as winners. You know, if you can't show me that, I'm not impressed at all. Man, I, I like my dogs dog. live up to that standard. You know, what I had dog, that was the standard. When I was a puppy, that's the standard. Whatever. It's the standard, you know, yeah. and I understand my standard ain't everybody's standard, but if my standard requires this and yours doesn't, don't try to jump in my lane with the with the tough talk shit. Talk yeah. about what you would it would do. Like I'm looking at you and what you saying don't add up, homie. Yeah, right. how you wouldn't fuck with this shit, but you feeding this? Like, come on, bro. Man. Can we keep it a buck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that happens talk. a lot. You can recognize it, you know, and and uh, some of the people I know. 
you know, from the past. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I did this and I did that. And I'm going, no, you didn't. No, you, you lying. You didn't, you know, you might have been there, but you didn't do shit. Yeah, you like you rode there that. with me, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I don't call them out because, you know, my, this is another thing for people if they want to get to the group is the, the, the point is to keep it focused on the dogs, you know. I don't like the drama. I don't like the arguing, name calling, none of that shit. I keep all that out. I'll delete it. And if you keep it up, I'll delete you. And the focus should be on the dogs and should be on the history and knowledge and, you know, sharing, uh, you know, opinions and all that stuff. So that I don't, uh, no Salute. politics, no religion, yeah. no race, no nothing, you know, keep it, keep Just, it focused on the dogs. And, you know, it, it's, it's a good time because I yeah I that's well, the only thing we got in common is the shit we love the most other than exactly. our families that's like it. we should at least be able to get together and congregate on this peacefully mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah like yeah. we was talking about earlier first. backstage like you know these mother I ain't even gonna air them out but still like <laughs> yeah don't come to my shit with that man no <laughs> like you motherfuckers know me in real life and in real life I am not with none of that shit yeah, yeah. do not fucking come over here now. With the show, I'm still the yeah. same motherfucker, just beer got bigger, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah it. Man. that's what I was saying, man. I like to just, I like to talk dogs, man. Anybody who's knowledgeable about some dogs, I like to shoot the shit with them, man. I just hate when you get into that, 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 that fake shit. I don't like that fake shit, you know what I mean? Like, dude, just yeah. talk to dogs, man. Just talk about some dogs. Let's talk about the history of the dogs. They share some stories. Let's just, you know what I mean? Because. We, we fucking nerds when it comes to the dogs. We nerds, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we, we look at pedigrees. We talk about old shit. You know, that's cool. But but I don't like all that tough-ass fake shit, man. Like, I don't with that stupid yeah, shit. Yeah, a lot of people want that story to be that part of the dogs. When, when it's fucking hard as fuck for that part of the story to be your part, too. Like, you, you go through a lot of shit to get that accolade in the dogs. Like, literally, like, you yeah. can say a dog name and a motherfucker from across the country have heard of that dog, seen offspring of that dog, like, that shit is hard to fucking do, for real, that's why it's not a lot of people like that, you know, without advertising dogs, nowhere, you know, name ring bells is what I'm saying, it's not too many people who name ring bells, you know, and, and, and people who, you know what the main issue be, people who talk about shit, a matter of factly, when they never touch the dog. Yeah. They ain't never seen a dog, but they'll tell you what's on somebody else's yard. And then yeah, oh, that's man, why, that, that's, that's why they suck, do it. Bro. They got they got nothing to lose. You know, they can talk all kinds of shit all day long. They ain't they ain't got shit. They ain't done shit. They never did, never will. So they can talk like I've seen people quote Howard Heinzel and they they like it's their own quote. And I'm going, man, I read that. I know, you know, Heinzel wrote that in an article in 1965, man. You know, don't don't act like you <laughs> said it. Uh, <laughs> like I always said, a good dog is where you find them. Yeah. Hey, motherfucker, no. You, you got that from your great-grandpa who yeah, got that, it from his, shit, motherfucker. Yeah, you didn't make that, that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like lying. that. Yeah. I invented <laughs> maximum stress. Yeah. Ain't nobody was yeah. talking about that shit before Robert Lim. Quit playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless you was a fucking athlete. Yeah, Nobody yeah. in the dogs was talking maximum stress, nothing. Nah. <laughs> but you invented that, huh? Well, where your meal at then? Mm -hmm. You ain't the meal maker. You stop lying. Yeah. Quit yep. playing. Yeah. You ain't got to do saying. all that. Oh, Whatever yeah. your part is, be great at that, man. You know? Yeah, yeah you just keep it real, man. Just keep it Absolutely. real. There's no... Ain't nobody going to put you down, you know, if you straight up and whatever, you don't yeah. have all the experience of the world. That's okay. You know, everybody went through that. I didn't know. Yep. Shit. Right. Ram didn't know shit. You learn as you go, right. and it takes you a long time to learn it. Right. So don't fake, don't fake it, you know. Yeah, hey, I mean. the old adage that I invented, you can't fake the funk. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. comes from, yeah, you can't fake playing funk yeah. music, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You can't fake the funk. Yeah. Hey, and the good part is, uh, go ahead, bro. No, no, no. I was like, no. I was saying, like, it's, it's like, like y'all said, man, look, everybody has to have a beginning. Everybody is a novice at some point, right? And then you go through stages of learning. I'm still fucking learning these dogs. I love yeah. talking to anybody who knows about dogs. That's what you do, right? You you learn. The moment you think you know everything and you can't learn shit, can't nobody tell you shit. I don't like talking to people like that because they assholes yeah. typically. They typically yeah. assholes. Yeah. They, they don't really know shit. That's you know a pseudo intellect. 
And they bad mouth everybody. They, they never got nothing good to say about nobody. It's always somebody. Yeah. You bring up a dog and say, hey, man, hey, what you think about these, uh, uh, you know, Grand Champion such and such, man? My dog ain't shit, man. Dog ain't hey. shit, man. Man, dog ain't hey, shit. Some motherfucker. What you think about Grand Champion T3? Oh, man, he wasn't all that good. He was fucking competition. So, like, motherfucker, how? Yeah. Even if he went in the old novice with fucking didn't know what they was doing out of eight times, somebody would have got him. <laughs> yeah. For real. Exactly. exactly. I tell people, you know, I don't know everything, and, and I never will, and I learn every day, and I'm glad for the members in the group because if I can't answer the question, there's somebody in there that will, that can. And, that you know, that's another good thing about having all those good people and they're all them old dog men and experienced guys and, and some don't have as much experience as I do and some have more than I do but you know somebody can answer that question I don't I don't have all that and I'm okay with that because same thing when I was competing I may not know everything about everything but neither does my opponent so you know he might not get his shit right you know <laughs> well like, yeah. like, like okay we, we're not going to talk about it uh, publicly but you know, like, um, like it's people who think they know exactly. You know, oh, I know, I know what happened to to uh, Art. I know exactly what happened to yeah. fucking uh, what's what's his name, uh, uh Pit General. And they be yeah. dead wrong. They be dead yeah. wrong, but they swear yeah. they know. You know what I mean? I, oh, I know. Oh, trust me, I know. Well, like they I know. said, they they read the same article I read. They right. they talked or heard secondhand from the same person. I did. So I know where they're getting it from. I know where it comes from. It's been repeated a thousand fucking times. That don't mean it's true. Right. Unless you talk to the people that were there and did it, you know, you just guessing. You just you 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 just or you're taking somebody's word that that person and that person don't know either. You know, it's just something they yeah, heard. They exactly. Heard the you thing. wasn't there. You can't know, motherfucker. Yeah. Was you in yeah. the truck yeah. when they grabbed Art off the yard? Exactly. How the fuck you know. Another, yeah, and another, another pet peeve. <laughs> right, since, since we going in on pet peeves, I'm going to another pet peeve of mine. Is people trying to shame motherfuckers and talking shit about where motherfuckers get their dog from. Okay. Oh, man, you got a dog from this person. Oh, you got a dog from over there. You got, bro, have you ever had one of them dogs? No, I ain't never had Oh, shut the fuck up then. Yeah, like, yeah. you don't know. Like, first of all, most of these dogs are $1,500. That's not, to me, that's not a lot of money, okay? I got over $2,000 in plane tickets that I didn't even use just sitting in fucking cyberspace some fucking way. That could have been a fucking dog, okay? Yeah. So I'm not, that's not a lot of money to me. So especially, I like dogs anyway. So if I'm going to spend 1500 check a dog out, raise it for a while, if it don't turn out, it don't turn out, okay? I got a good, I got had a dog for a year, two years, and it, it didn't turn out, boom, I give me another one. Okay, if fifteen hundred dollars is too much for you to invest, then you in the wrong fucking game, bro. You in the wrong fuck. Just go ahead and like, you know, do some other shit, man. Fight cockroaches or some shit. Whatever the <laughs> fuck, motherfucker, be doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, no, no lie at all. I didn't find this out till years later. But like some of my best dogs came from a novice who got his first two dogs that happened to be good dogs, improved, you know, short order and long haul, bred them together. And the dogs produce champions, you know. This is, I didn't find this out till years later. Like if I'd have known then, I wouldn't even got them. But them turned out to be some of my best dogs. Yeah. And when I got out of the dogs and placed them wherever they went, the people still using them in their program right now. You know, they still competing at a high level when they fucking put them in their programs. Like, yeah. But that the happened. dogs is literally where you find them. And I did not know, you know. Yeah. There yeah. was dude first two dogs ever, you know. And they happened to be good dogs because he got them from a reputable breeder who at the time was only producing, you know, good dogs and not. So, yeah, <laughs> that shit yeah. was crazy. I ain't find it out till like way long, long time later. If I knew that off gate, I wouldn't even went, spent the money to go out there to the yard to even look at them. You know, what the yeah. fuck? No, you don't know what no. you're doing, homie. Get out of here. <laughs> but he yeah. was, you know. He didn't know he had somebody else, you know, conditioning his shit and all that for him. He was real enough to know. But I did not know them was his first shit. <laughs> and they happened to be real good dogs who produce dogs who produce dogs. Hey, shit work out like that. What up, bro? <laughs> this is how you know women know you, man. My wife's going to come in here to us. So $1,500 ain't shit to you, huh? 
I need, I, I need some money. You know, so, <laughs> God damn, D Bo stole me right, out. Right, I can't right. cap online. Shit. Right, right. <laughs> Fifteen hundred ain't shit, huh? So, okay, so I need some money. Like, yeah, I did, girl. He, well, he knows he is here. Was you watching the show? Damn. <laughs> See, that's why I don't, I, don't, I don't talk to my wife about how much money, how much money I spend on dogs because who we? I'm trying to. Oh tell yeah, you, you gonna boy. hear about it? Yeah. But, man, she man, she she act fool about that money on some dogs. I'm like, hey, dog, you man, I just show up like, with the dog? dog and just deal with it then, bro. I don't even say I want this, none of that, because I already know it's gonna be the same argument. Yeah, that, I don't know. We need this, 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 this. Everything mm-hmm. before a dog. This is the only chance I could get this dog in the history. We get the dog, God damn it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I would just get the dog and bring it home. I will trade one out. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she worried about the dog. She needed to worry about all them goddamn Jordans I got in the basement. How much I paid for them shit? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna talk about my secret Nike stash in the garage under the tools. <laughs> them goddamn man, I got shoes that cost more than these dogs. Uh, oh, Shit, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I ain't even wore the motherfuckers. I need to sell that shit. That shit up out of here. I ain't even wear that bullshit. But um, but yeah, man, uh, we having a good convo today. Anybody gotta go? Anybody to rush to get out of here? No, uh uh-uh. uh. No, oh, oh, no. no. As far as that last comment, I don't I don't as far as the last comment, I don't have no money. I don't keep no, no money, I don't use no money. And and it works because you know, if I need something, I get it or or whatever. Hell yeah, this is a cash free establishment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just uh, you know, but I I don't I don't tell my old lady how to spend it. She don't tell me. Hey, what I do know. though, cause you know I'm a mobile mechanic, so I deal mostly cash every day. So yeah. I just always make sure to just keep a little yeah. stash. And here you go. This all of it. You this got the to. whole tape. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, better than arguing, you feel me? <laughs> Man, you ain't yeah. shit. I that's know. funny because you know what? You but know I'm what, real that, enough that, to that, admit it. Yeah, that, that's probably that's probably what my wife does. She probably got I don't know Buku money hidden somewhere. Yeah. I don't know about. Oh yeah, know. they always got a stash. Well, yeah, 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 you know I love spending money. I didn't. That's what's taking me so long to finish off my engine. I keep sneaking and buying different performance parts. Yeah. Well, I catch them on sale. So yeah, I'm about you know five G's <laughs> over the goddamn recommended cost. But you yeah. know, <laughs> she give me my wife give me hell because I, I got her. I got her on a budget, right? A spending budget and shit. Because you know. This is my personal opinion. I ain't nobody else gotta listen to me. But you know, women they do dumb shit with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I got her on a spending budget. So, you know, I mean, she she, you know, every year, uh she <laughs> tax time every year, she be mad at the motherfucker, like, you made this much money? What the fuck? Why? Why? Why do we have this a, a budget? That's why we got money, because we budget. Yeah. That's why we got money to go on vacations and shit, because we smart. If you knew how much money we was making, your ass be wanting to go in Jamaica for a fucking two months a year. Get fuck out of here. Uh, we should go to Jamaica for the weekend. Like, hold yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> that's 10000 yeah. by itself. Wait a minute. I'm trying to get <laughs> these dogs. That's going to be 10000 too. So just to avoid all that, you know, just stash you some to the side. Yeah. Nothing wrong, you know, because I, mean, I like to have fun. So, yeah, here you go. But I like to have the bills paid, too. So yeah, you gotta yeah. work out both. Shit, I told her she told me some uh, uh you know what I mean? Cause like I, I'm trying to get some more uh some land and shit, you know what I mean? Cause I, you know, I got that's the shit I want to do, you know what I mean? For my own piece, I want some land down south somewhere with a, with a fresh body of water, my own little lake, pond, or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I want to raise some shit, animals and shit. That's what I want to do. That's just my that's my definition of peace, right? So, you know, she she be on that. Oh, no, you got uh. You know, you're finna go do this, you're finna go do that. And, Cause you know her family got uh a lot of land in Arkansas and shit, you know what I mean? But they ain't using it. they got squatters on their land. I said, look here, they got like over how many acres? Sixty some acres. And they got squatters on there because everybody in the family is in the city up up north. I'm like, yo, tell me I can have that land and I promise you I'll get all the fucking squatters off there. Give me a chopper and I'm getting everybody out of that motherfucker. Get the hey, fuck out of here. We don't even need to chop. We just bring my melon wall up there. Turn him loose. I bet you they get up off that land. Yeah, 60 fucking acres. You know how much land that is? <laughs> yeah. 60 fucking acres. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you imagine, you, know, you, you imagine them you know, people in that fucking tent in that Malawi run up and shit, man. That's fucked man. up, boy. <laughs> hey, man. I'm gonna say I'm releasing the dog. You got, got the Malawi out there attacking the yeah, <laughs> attacking Biting the tent down. people. Yeah, oh, you know he trained the bike, bike for real. You know, <laughs> so hell yeah, let me know when you're ready. We ain't even gotta bring the chop. We gonna bring the biter. Okay, it's only right. gonna take about two, and the rest of them gonna get the fuck on. Like I don't want none of that. Gonna turn into red, daddy. You want some of this too, old man? No. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. I'm, I'm gonna get that shit. I'm gonna fuck that. I'm gonna give me some land down there though, and uh, relax, man. Kick back. Uh, you know, cause. I'm getting tired of this motherfucking city, bro. I'm tired of people in my business. I'm tired of fucking having to walk my dogs at nighttime and shit. I'm tired of all this stupid shit, man. Yeah. It's more well, peaceful. It's, it's better for yeah. me to walk at night. It's cooler, so but it still be loose dogs <laughs> and all that dumb shit that come with it. So well, I feel yeah. you. It's better just to be away from motherfuckers. <laughs> you know this yeah. dude, this dumbass dude said, uh, uh I, I was walking. Um, This is back when I had uh my, my band dog. And I'm walking to my dog. This fucking dude got his dog. I hate the neighbors who got their dogs off the leash. And they think like, oh, well, you know, he won't hurt anybody. It, that, that's not the point, motherfucker. You don't know what my dog going to do. You know what I'm saying? Get this motherfucker yeah. on the fucking leash and shit. You know, then when your dog snatched this motherfucker up or something, they want to go, oh, well, your dog's so aggressive. Man, fuck you. Your dog should have been on the leash. You can't just have your dog running around up and down the street because everybody knows him and he don't chase cats. He's a nice dog. Well, whatever. I got my dog on the leash. My dog don't like other dogs. That's your fucking pro- problem. Yeah, they motherfucker called the police on me and everything, man. Yeah, it was when I first moved where I'm at now. There's a motherfucker used to just, now people let their dogs out at night and just let them run around the whole hood and he'd come home in the morning type shit. I walk my dogs at night, man. I ain't know he was doing that. I'm thinking it's just a loose dog running up. He friendly, but shit, my dog wasn't. He grabbed him up, you know. Long story short, they started fucking keeping that motherfucker in the house. Like, nigga, what is this your fault? Like, I make sure my shit on the leash. For one, this motherfucker with all the activities. And for two, I'm not finna be chasing this motherfucker. He in way better shape than me when I'm in fucking great shape. You know, he, he outrun me all that. So, no, I'm fucking abide by all leash laws, all of that. And you should, too. If yeah, I'm with the yeah. toughest dog ever doing it, your fucking cur shit should do it too, bitch. What is you doing? Yeah, it's called responsible ownership. That's all it is. Man. Exactly. That's it. Uh, Shanti Mindy had a question yeah. for you, Mr. Garcia. He said, uh, did you in the past enjoy refereeing shows? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, not to brag, but I've refereed hundreds of them all yeah. over, all over the place. Uh, Outside the country, all over the U.S., everywhere. People, a lot of people like me doing it because you know I'm fair. I know the rules. That's one thing. If you're gonna ref, you better know the rules, and you better be able to to. If somebody wants to change something or do something different, you know you got to know what that means. You got to know how to handle. There ain't no cheating. There ain't no this or that. I don't bet on any dog. I didn't bet on any dog when I was refereeing. Uh, I could refer my friend. I'm going to call it fair because I'm following the rules. And if you follow the rules, uh, there, there ain't no discrepancies, nothing. There's, there's stipulations for everything. Even if it's not written down in black and white, there's two things in most of the rules, if not all of the rules. Fair play will be observed at all times and no unfair advantage for either dog. So if you understand what that means, there's no cheating. There's no spinning teeth. There's no mishandling. There's no stepping on dogs. There's no touching dogs. There's no, you know, standing with your dog in the corner, holding them in your arms instead of facing them in the corner. There's no, none of hey, that. Not to cut you off, but I know it's going to be a question asked. When you say touching them, he meaning if he didn't call a turn and tell you to handle your dogs, then you just touching them yeah. before a handle has been called. Yeah. And yep. I like to add, after a handle's been called, you can only touch them to grab them to get them back to the corner. You can't be in there right. petting them and none of that shit. None of that. You can't pet them. You can't bump them. You can't pretend yeah, to Yeah, you could only touch them to handle them. And yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's uh, it. But and, and before a handle or a turn is called by either you, your opponent, yeah. or the ref, yeah. you better not touch them or you're fouling. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even but, even when I was, let's say I was schooling dogs, you'll see a lot of people pet them and all that. That's that's fine. You can do that, but I didn't do it because you might fuck up and touch them when you, you know it gets in your head. You're already used to. It. You just yeah. mentally conditioned to do that. Yep, and you've been so fouled out on some shit you was winning. You exactly. know. Yeah, I seen one guy. He was handling a dog, and and the dog's owner was standing outside, right? And the guy handling, he was a novice. He really didn't, you know, know how to handle. And the guy goes, check your dogs for fangs. And he went and he lifted his dog's lift up, lips up, one side and the other side while they're going at it. And he got fouled out right away. Now. So you can't do that. It, some people will trip your dog, step on your dog, bump your dog, bump their dog, put their knee behind their dog so the, the other one can't push them down. All kinds of shit. You know, right. they, 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 they uh, I see know, one I, motherfucker start, you know, standing over it. His dog was on the body, standing over the top dog, like, you know, talking shit to that dog. Like, yeah, whatever yeah. he could do to get an advantage, you know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. Seen, yeah. I've seen, well, well, I heard stories of uh, motherfuckers throwing their dog uh, across the scratch line. And shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you can't do that. Feet. You can't lift their legs up, you know, their feet where they're not touching. You can't push them. I seen yeah, a video. All four, yeah, you yeah can't. I seen a video of a guy. He was just like scratching him to a, a pad or some shit, you know. And he's lifting the dog up like that. And when he release him, he push him forward like that. Right. You can't do that. You can't bump him. You can't when you're stepping around him. You know, you can't kick him in the ass. Some guys. I learned how to protect myself against cheating by watching people cheat. And I seen some of the best that know how to cheat, even at the scales, even at the, at the wash, all kinds of shit. There's all kinds of different ways of cheating. So you have to have that experience. Some people will cut you off. I can stop a person from cutting me off, you know, and, 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 uh, but, but if they're doing, there's even some people that they'll, they'll wave a hat to get, that's not really illegal unless it affects the other dog, you know? Yeah. But, but, but you can't, you can't, if it, if the dog starts getting spooky because you're waving your hat, cooling your yeah, dog, you got to stop. Even though I'll you did bring it in with you inside yeah, yeah. the pit, once you in right. there, nothing can come out from either yeah. side of right. the pit. Right, it's right. over when that happens. Yeah, you can't have spectators banging on the inside. You know, right. banging the dog. They can't be behind your dog and and bang them or yell at them, trying to get going and all that. It just there's all kinds of tactics. But yeah, back to the point. I did referee a lot. I enjoyed it. For me, it's the best seat in the house, you know. Hey, I just and, was going to say that. You got a whole different perspective of the action. Yeah, yeah right there, you know. Yeah, you just got to you gotta remember who, you know, whose turn it is to scratch. And what I used to do is, is I'd have the sticks, right? And I always went to the same neutral corner. So if I'm in a neutral corner and it's the dog to my right, it's, it's turn to scratch, I put the sticks in my right back pocket. So he scratches right after that. I put my st the sticks in my left-hand pocket so – the dude to the left of me, it's his time, you know, right. it's his turn next time to scratch because yeah. you can get mixed up. You can, you can forget whose turn it is, you know? So just Hell little things yeah. like that, just little things like that, you know, for, for history. Yeah, sticks would help too, though, like, like how you say you colorblind so you would know. Yeah. Yeah. If both dogs are one red, yeah. one black, yeah. you, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. easier to remember what side. Yeah. yeah. That happened to me with a friend of mine. We both had the same colored dogs. We were it's just a roll, but I, I couldn't tell which one was mine. I had to ask him, you know, which one's mine? He pointed to it. They were the yeah, same color, yeah. same, like, same style, everything. I just, I couldn't tell, man. <laughs> you end up handling each other dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me read this super chat real quick. Uh, Big uh, Pig TV in the super chat. Appreciate you, man. Much love. He says, uh, 78, I'm in Arkansas. Just throw me some. I got you. Salute, man. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I'm going to give me some land somewhere, though. But, yeah, you know, I remember uh, the – I was so creeped out. Well, I was a kid, though. I was a kid. This is like fucking 1990 or some shit. You know what I mean? And I went to a show, and um, I saw this dude on the ground. And his dog is getting worked. It's getting worked and shit. And he, he on the ground blowing the dog nuts. And I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Why is he doing that? This is gross. Yeah. He's blowing the dog yeah. nuts and shit. And it wasn't until I got older that I, got, I, I peeped game on why he was doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, the, the 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 you can do that, you know, and some people will blow on their back, but what what struck me as funny is they'll do it right in the beginning. Yeah, know, that's weird. The dog ain't 
they ain't hot and they this and that. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I don't know. Maybe it helps. Maybe yeah, it don't. Yeah, you just but, a butt blower if you doing yeah, it off. Yeah. So what did they say? Release and you already yeah, going. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, you that was, a butt <laughs> Get out of here. You a weirdo. Something else going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, no wonder man. the dog listens to you. You know, no wonder, yeah. no, wonder, no wonder the dog, you bonded real good with him, I bet. You know? Hell yeah, <laughs> butt bonded with him. Uh, yeah. yeah so, leave that dog yeah. alone. Scratch him, him and just start blowing on his ass. Yeah. That's fucked up, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not hot yet for all of that, man. Wait a minute. Yeah. You got yeah. something else going on, homie. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> And you usually them do type it. of dog owners. Yeah, yeah. You, usually they'll do it because somebody else did it. They don't. The person that started it or does it, they don't even know why they did it. They, they think mm -hmm. it cools the dog off, but not in the beginning, not not right, right. away. He, he ain't hot yet, so right. they just repeating what they saw what someone told them to do. You know, it's uh, just like if like you in there, uh, if you, you finna you, get some head <laughs> and the chick will start blowing on your balls, you know, you yeah. you gonna fucking get hotter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Hey, what, yeah. hey, you know what I was you too, Mr. Garcia, in your time of reference, how often, well, how common is uh, uh, teeth filing? Not not that, uh, I think in all my refs, I only filed out two people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they were blatant files, you know, they, like that one lift in the lips or, or one of them, he, he, uh, he uh, released his dog before the count was over. But other than that, it it didn't happen too often, you know. But well, but but did you say oh, teeth oh, filing? Oh, 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 yeah, no, you talking about people who put oh, sharpen their oh, teeth? Yeah, oh, yeah, sharpen the oh, cutters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Filing, Most filing. professional dog men don't file out, you know. Yeah, no, they don't. You know, talking about filing, filing teeth. Yeah, like sharpening the teeth, sharpening yeah, the fangs. Yeah. That, I, Have I've you seen it. that? Yeah, I, no, not that I know of. You know, not 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 that I could tell. You you have to. You'd have to get down there and, and check because, and I've never seen it done or know how to do it, but I've read how people do it. And, and you got to, they, they basically, they file the inside, you know, like a, mm -hmm. like a yeah, chicken, like a chicken exactly. knife. Like a spur. You know, yeah. Like a spur with that, you know. I, I, uh, I, one guy do it and a dog actually, before the show, he did his own tongue. Right. Cut his own right. tongue. So he, he had the four. But and then, yeah. then and you're, you're making the anatomy weaker, so you can exactly break that's what I was about yeah. to say. I seen yeah. cats try it and break the teeth, yeah, you know, just yeah. on the cowhide and shit. Yeah. Like, you, you're weakening that enamel, bro. When you do that, mm -hmm. you know, either his teeth gonna be sharp or they not, man. Yeah, everybody yeah. can't punch hard, but it's more fighters who don't got knockouts that's still great, you know, right? Right, yeah. right. It would be like, you know, you see fighters, they they uh take the glove the the padding out of their glove or something like that you know that's that's a yeah. foul, you know exactly but as far as actual fouls committed during a show well twice, yeah it's, it's motherfuckers who didn't showed up with like put silvers in their dog mouth and tried to still compete yeah. and get got yeah. get kicked out of here yeah. you know yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, you know yeah. and another thing i want to ask mr garcia is how uh, well you, you i mean of course you don't have to say names or nothing but Right. How, like, how many times have people tried to, like, you know, in your hundreds of times reference, how many times have people tried to, like, uh, uh, you know, woo you or get you to be on their side? Yeah. You know, no, that's a, that's a good point. What 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 people will do, and and they'll do this with the handlers, they'll do it with the ref, is outside people or even handlers, you know, they'll talk to you or they'll yell at you or they'll say, hey ref, hey hey hey, look at me, hey hey. I don't do that. I focus on the dogs. I focus on the handlers. That's it. And even even when I was handling, I never looked over to my partner. You know, I tell him, look, if you want to talk to me, give me a buy, whatever. I can hear you. I don't have to look at you because, you know, you look away, you might miss something, especially if you're refereeing. And I've seen people do that. You know, they're over there talking to somebody and the dogs turn. They didn't see the turn. Yeah. So now, I, now what? Now what? I would, you know, I would uh get the ref where I see him do that shit. I call a turn, even though didn't nobody turn. Hey, turn his dog. Yeah. You turn yeah. around and granted, yeah. that's your fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that, you that, got that, called right. slipping. So yeah. yeah, that's how you yeah. combat refs who play into the crowd. Just exactly. call a turn and they will look up. Yeah. So I know? never, I never. <laughs> and then there's time. There was one time where both of them were committing what you would call fouls, right? They, they 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 weren't handling properly, 
So what I did is, is as the dogs were going out, it, I said, look, from this point on, these dogs are going to settle it. I ain't going to hear your call turn this or that or this guy's touching my dog or this or that, nothing. I'm going to call it like it is, and the dogs are going to settle it. That's it, because both of y'all are committing fouls or you're trying to, you know, get over on something, pull some bullshit. So yeah, and I was now we're going to see who I'll, got I'll, bulldogs today, yeah, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> and I was in another country, so, you know, I wasn't going to really raise a ruckus or I wasn't going to take one side or the other. Yeah, and, but and, motherfuckers and just, gotta respect that. Now we're getting down to the yeah, nitty gritty yeah, now. Yeah, since you yeah, don't want to pick call, them up I'm the a, right way, let's see right. who's a bitch. <laughs> exactly. So now the dog's gonna settle it. Whoever quits first, that's who loses, and that's it. And it played out that way. You know, it played out that way. I got a question, yeah, uh, uh, question for the, Ryan. The, oh, go ahead, Mr. Garcia. I was just gonna say that that uh, you know, I've never been offered bribes or anything like that, but but there are people that try to get you to pay attention to them or listen or see their point of view or try and intimidate you. You know, I just ignore them. I'm there to do one thing and I keep focus on that and it played out the way it did and the rules were followed and that's it. Nobody can argue that after the fact, you know. Hey, Ram, I got a question for you. Um, Go ahead. You know, because this is something me and my homeboy be arguing about all the time. He like a, I don't know, he like some type of sellout or some shit. I don't know what the fuck wrong with. That's my boy though. But he always talking this shit about uh, overseas and shit. You know, no, I'm not hating, but he be like, oh man, in Europe, man, in Japan, in China, man, hey man, they got some shit over there. But like, bro, this is American pit bull terrier. We we'll smack all that shit, bro. I don't give a fuck what nobody talking about. You know, that's how I feel. You know what I mean? How, like from your experience. How well, how good does the overseas stuff do over here? Uh, a lot of the times, like when I would go to the, the conventions down south and shit, uh, they would get smacked, man. And usually they would get out handled and out conditioned, you know. They, if you go watch some of their videos, they handle different over there. Like their official shit, both handlers have, have sticks and shit, and they be calling that, you know. So they shit is a little different. It's Cajun rule ish, and that ish part when it comes to where it's Cajun rules only shows, you know, the level of competition higher because the standards and the rules is higher, and you got to stick to them. Like if I was calling it, I'm bringing a copy of the Cajun rules to them. We going over them. This is what they mean. What did y'all agree to under these terms? Is we scratching out a turn? Is we scratching the win? Any of that shit? But these rules right here is what we doing. You mm -hmm. feel me? And if they don't follow them rules, it's going to show up when you come to the place that do follow them rules. But again, it's good dogs everywhere. It's just you got to do harder due diligence to see because, you know, you can see some shit and you could talk directly to the breeder. But if you talk to somebody who is competition, you know, they could show you these dogs is getting smacked more times than not. And how do I know? Because I'm the one smacking them more times than not. And he could show you that, you know. You just gotta be careful. There's good dogs everywhere though, bro. Yeah, There's no place true. got the best. You might have the best dogs at the time, but somebody else is coming with that shit for your ass, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that and that's exactly, bro. And you know, like I say that because like so many people will like put an emphasis on dogs that are winning dogs, they winning races and shit. In, in, in other countries, all right, and they become champions and grand champions in other countries, and that's cool. It sounds impressive, just like in you know what I'm saying. Pardon me, I got I always do this, but I got to go to my profession, just like with the pimping, right? A lot of people, oh, you no, know, they, they cross country, cross country, cross country is a beautiful thing. It sounds good and it's great. However, it's a lot of local motherfuckers in Vegas that's crushing. And making more money than any cross country motherfucker. There's some niggas yeah. in the Bay Area in Vegas that's killing. That stomp shit. down with. I mean, you feel me? It's, it's, some, it's some niggas that ain't never left fucking San Francisco, uh, or never left the Bay. Uh, that and, Al and, pimp and, the best cross country pimp you all, know all day long. I didn't seen them because I motherfucking broke me for four bitches out there. Yeah, you know yeah. So, levels so, to the shit. You right, know. So, yeah. so what my point is, just because you travel. And you went somewhere, it don't mean you own some elite status or some shit. Like, it's, nah, it's people some motherfuckers here. who go and compete, 
in other countries that water fucking you is garbage. You better not drink that water. It's full of parasites, and that's their daily drinking water. They got to go far to get good water for the dog and quality food. They might could be the best in their area doing that, but that don't mean yeah. they're the best. Like, let's yeah. be real. You feel yeah, me? That's true. And that's yeah, the reason why I stick, not to cut you off, Mr. Garcia, right. I'll close it up right. real quick. I stick with the Jack Kelly way of thinking. He didn't ever register none of that shit from nowhere but here in Mexico because that shit could be verified easily. Yeah. So, hell yeah, if it, he wouldn't put it in the goddamn book, I don't give a fuck what you're doing over there. It's too hard to verify and motherfuckers be lying. You feel me? Motherfuckers lie over here. And we could see this shit. You know motherfuckers would lie over there and we can't see them. Man, for real, for yeah. real, dog. Yeah, that's true. The, the, you know, there, there, are, there are good dogs everywhere. I've seen them. But to say out of the country they're better, no. No, the dogs come from here mm -hmm. first, you know. And I've even had people complain about Cajun rules, you know. They like the old way, this and that. And I tell them, well, the dogs you got, the dogs that you're using, they won or lost under Cajun rules. How you going to complain about the rules if what you're using, that's how they won? You know, they change the rules over there. They have their reasons for doing it. Don't make no sense to me. But if that's how they want to do it, that's fine. But to say over there they're better, you know, it's like everybody thinks the grass is greener on the other side because they they more active, you know. And, and if you want to put money terms on it, let's say in Europe, those people, because of their economy, they have more money. Right. But right. compared to Mexico, where they don't have a lot of money, there's a lot of dogs in Mexico, man. They, they, they you know, and they, they have been even Dude. in my time. They do. They do all kinds of shit. They have a lot more shows than anywhere else. You know, more. Yeah, than I would say more, more. Mexico close second. And I only say <laughs> yeah. second because they could still get out handled in condition. They ain't got yeah. that. As a yeah, whole, all true. the way together, where it's consistent, and like the top but guys see, out count, there know what they're doing, but, but not everybody know what they're doing yet. Ram, right, right. I still, I count Mexico as North America still. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. Kelly would allow shit for Mexico and the shit Giroux had in Canada to be entered into the journal because right. that shit could be easily verified. The right. shit that take right. fucking. 15, 16 hours to get to is going to be hard as fuck to verify. Yeah. You know? Even even in my time, the, the guys from the United States that went to Mexico, experienced guys, you know, some of them traveled 2,000 miles, 1,000 miles, 1,500 miles. You know, they, on average, they would still win more than they lost down there. And a lot of it is like Ram said, they got the experience, they know how to handle and they're better at condition because they've been doing it longer. And even even the older Mexican guys that that been doing it for decades, they still weren't doing it as long as some Americans they competed against. You know, put put it like that. Exactly, so, and so, I'll take so, it. Uh, oh, go ahead, my bad. No, so I was gonna say that the, you know when it comes to the dog been here longer, so even if you just started, you know, uh, uh, whatever age you. You still have that influence of all the people around, all the dogs around, all the breedings, all that, where it gives you a little bit leg up on on other people that that been doing it even for a long time, you know. And that's a good point. Hell yeah, I'm glad I let you finish that one. Hell yeah. But I'll build on that and say too, this was just my philosophy I came up with. Places where it's frowned upon, like here to do dogs the conventional way. You can't have a lot of dogs, you know, so you can only have so many of them. And when you're serious, the, what you got is going to be the best of what you got, you know. Right. So you're going to have point. less dogs, but the less dogs are going to be better dogs in general. Whereas if we go to Croatia and shit where they, they it's cool to do, we can build up to 100 or so dogs. There's no way in hell we'll see which dogs is the best of that, you know, if we yeah. just keep doing this shit because it's not frowned upon. So, you know. Yep. Places yep. where weed is legal, you only gonna find Dro. You're not gonna find Reggie. You know, yeah. Because they only want if you're gonna risk it, you're gonna bring you risking it with the best. Fuck yeah. getting some Reggie. I'm gonna get the same amount of time if I get 20 pounds of Reggie. I might as well get 20 pounds of gas. Same shit with the dogs. It's frowned upon. So the serious people don't got a lot of dogs, but the dogs they got top shelf shit. Right. Yeah. No. Good point. You know. <laughs> 
And how how you feel about um people who let, let's say a motherfucker got like you know because it's be a lot of lies being told overseas. And I'm like once again, I'm not hating because I like uh, like the uh, some dogs from overseas are very good. I like them, the bloodline and shit. But it be a lot of lies told. It can't be verified. So motherfuckers want to hype this shit up, you know what I mean? You know, motherfucking dogs becoming grand champions, you know what I'm saying, in a fucking year. Like, I got to question your competition, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I'm, I don't give a fuck who you are. I got to question your competition. Uh, you got three best in shows and shit. Like, you know what I mean? You know, you know it's just it's just, it's a lot yeah. of accolades that's just thrown out there. Just really yeah. sales pitches so they can, it's like, it's like somebody buying they buy some. This, we're gonna use weed because weed is like acceptable. Okay, you buy some weed from America, right? And then I'm sell, I'm reselling it back to you because I've, I'm oh man, you know, like like Ram say, right? I get I get a a clone or something, right? I get a clone, a little a little piece of a plant, and I, I'm growing it myself. But I'm telling you, this is ten times better than the shit you gave me. Oh man, I did some extra shit to it. Oh man, I did some extra. I, hey, I'm telling you, this shit here is fire, and I'm selling it back to you. I mean, I, I think a lot of times them dudes just be selling us back shit that we sold. That, them. Yeah, the bullshit yeah. they got. So a lot of right. that happens, you know. Yeah. Motherfuckers, yeah. when they would work for the ADBA back in the day, would sell them they shit that should have been cold, you know. And that's fucked up because you got people building whole family lines of that shit, believing in your word, and you selling some shit that. Should have been fucking off the yard already. Like, why did you still even got that motherfucker in your program? <laughs> You're not living up to the standard. So, <laughs> comment. Well, in that, in that respect, the people are the same because if they lie and cheat and steal over here, they're gonna do it over there anywhere, right? And the way you know that's true, if you know some of the real dudes over there, they're the ones be telling you that dog ain't no grand champion. That dude's a liar. He ain't never done that same shit. You yeah, know, and, and, yeah, and, and, we was looking and, at some uh, shit from over there, some nasty yeah. man shit. Yeah, yeah, Talking to him, yeah. you know, that shit is the shit. But you ask people from yeah. around there, and they're like, hell no. That shit a dual pull up like you in a pull up competition. Yeah. yeah that's, and I've seen it. I've seen videos of their dogs. I've seen a few. They were good dogs. You some people will call them great dogs, they're good, but overall they just average. They just average. And a lot of times, you know, again, I ain't hating and I have friends over there. But the ones that, that, not them, but other people that don't really know what they're doing, they're just cool with their dog. They just leave them down, leave them there, just so they can say they're dead game or whatever. It's a way. Yeah, to, and that brings up way. a point. One of the dudes in the chat asked, why are Cajun rules the best? And the simplest way to explain that is the dog don't got to take no unnecessary punishment to give a chance. The dog get a chance to quit. Right. If he, he turned and the handle was made, he don't come out, it's over no matter how long it took for that to occur. Absolutely. No dog, either dog is not taking any unnecessary punishment. It's yeah. the fairest for everybody involved if you're involved in that shit. And that's why yeah. it's the best because it come with other rules too that stick to that same guideline. It's exactly. not about who could win. It's about if your shit going to quit. The rules is built around that. So right. the, if he quit sooner, the better. All of that. You yeah, know, that's the original. Down. Exactly. Them leave them down shit. Might leave them down and win, but you lose your shit too, where you could have yeah. won and still, and that's why Cajun rules implemented scratching. That yeah. let you know if your dog want to continue. If he don't scratch, yeah. it's over. Simple as that. That's you what scratching that, the that win, you the... gonna scratch. If you don't scratch, y'all both lose. There's yeah. no draw. Y'all both lost. You know, that's right. why it's important. Yeah, that's the original intent of the rules to find out the gamer of two dogs, and that's yep. why it's it's scratch and turn because some of the old rules was whoever turned had to scratch. So if your dog turned every time, scratching every time, the other dog don't have to scratch. Yeah, and because and some because, dogs style is turn styles, just because the <laughs> yeah. dog turning don't mean he finna quit. <laughs> that's right, and and because of the most of the conventions in in uh, Cajun country. The biggest one that Trahan had was was during the summer or the end of summer, so it's real hot. They they were losing a lot of dogs because of the old rule, so that's why they invented scratch and turn. You know, you're gonna find out who's gamer of the two, who's gonna quit first, and you potentially can save your dog 
afterwards where uh, in the old rules, even if you won, you lost a good dog, you know. They're, they're, you know, it's, it's a lot of. These wait, hold on. So you tell it. Wait, hold on. So you telling me they, they altered the rules just to, for the climate. That was part of it. Yeah, that was part of it. Wow. Yeah. But, but, but the, but the, it's because, because, uh, like I said, the old rules didn't allow for that, and a yeah. lot of dogs were being lost. And these weren't, these weren't, you know, uh, Gaboon Tran and and uh, uh, Floyd Boudreau. They weren't novices, you know. They matched a lot of dogs through the years back when they were teenagers, and you know they matched, after you know, care and all of that was top shelf. Yeah, and yeah. still so couldn't they, save they, them. Right. So they they implemented those rules for for that reason, you know. And and even even if you don't do them in hot weather, you know, at some point the the dog's gonna play out, you know. And if there's no handling, if there's no scratching. You just got to leave them there. Even in cooler weather, you just, you, the rules call for that. You leave them there and that's it. They could, they could, they could, uh, you know, it's like the out of hole count. They shorten it. Some back in the day, it used to be like five minutes. So you could have dogs laid out. They could let go for 30 seconds and then, you know, or a minute. You go or back two minutes, in hole. Yeah. Go back in hole. You can't handle them. So Cajun rules dropped it down to 30 seconds. We, we made it just 10 seconds. Let's yeah. get the handling going, you know, and, and that's the professional that's, that's, modification. You yeah, know, exactly. ain't gonna be here if you if your shit gonna quit, he gonna quit, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's that, what it's that, for. That's the, really the most humane rules, you know. Yeah, it is. I mean, if you care about the dogs, if you don't, then why have any fucking rules at all? Just leave them there, yeah. let them go. And, Might you know, as well just a, come the off point? the couch. You yeah. Know? What's, what's the fucking point? You know, every every sport has rules, you know, and they have them for a reason. And, and, you know, you don't want a boxer dying every time he fights, you know, right. and, you know, you got to, you know, give, give him a chance to, to get knocked down or get a chance. You know, some people, some guys quit in the corner or their, 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 their uh, handlers can stop it even during the match. You know, you can do that with the dogs, too. You see enough. You don't need no hand. You don't need nothing. You want to stop it. You stop it. You know, where, where even back in the day, that wasn't allowed. They went strictly by the rules, so yeah, they had to change. Hell that. yeah, like, they had to change that with the Cajun rules. Yeah, yeah. And a perfect example of that was uh, <coughs> who, who was that? Ali Frazier, two or three? Which one was it? When three. Ali said three, yeah. When Ali said, "Look, I was about to quit. Yeah. I'm tired as fuck." And if and, and, and it just so happened, Joe Frazier quit before he did. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He won. Yeah, yeah. His corner called that. He he uh. Man, they, that's was when they was like fifteen rounders and shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, they stopped he it. was that, pissing that blood after that shit. Yeah, fourteen <laughs> rounds, they stopped it. Yeah, yep. he said that that was the closest he felt to death. You know. Yeah, yep. yeah, he was pissing so, blood. Yeah, the, the Cajun rules help keep you from all of that. You know, now they don't always work. Sometimes motherfuckers can't go in the hold, and you'll be there for three hours in the same hold. You know. Wait yeah, on the motherfucker to come out. Yeah. Yeah. I seen that two female they got they got their teeth got one one of them's tooth got locked up in the palate of the other. And they yeah. lived there for a long time. And yeah. then they, they agreed to scratch them. Right. And they scratched back and the, they went right to the mouth again. Her, her tooth yeah. got hung up in that palate again, man. They ended up calling it a draw. It was like three three twenty three or something like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that shit. I don't like that shit. That's one thing. That's the only the only thing. I got a strong stomach. I I done seen some disgusting shit, but one thing I can't stand is the noise of teeth grinding. You know what I mean? Yeah, teeth to yeah. teeth. Yeah, I hate it that. It is shit, cringy, man. like God damn, somebody finna <laughs> lose one. <laughs> right, right. Because especially if you, if your dog, you like, man, come on, like yeah. that. That shit. Is, I hate that grinding sound. That is the most yeah. fucked up shit to hear, man. <laughs> I, I I'd rather hear. It's like fingernails like, on a chalkboard. Yeah, yeah like it, that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fucked up. Hey, to answer your question, boss man, you do gotta re scratch sorta if you get a fang and you gotta separate them. The ref will pull out the stick. You gotta, you know, both everybody grab a dog, separate them. Whoever fang get defanged, and you gotta release. You know, yeah. no further than three feet apart from each other. Some people yeah. do two feet, some do yeah. three. Between, but depending on if they got big dogs, you know, you got big old fifty plus pound males. Yeah, three feet because two feet yeah. ain't enough. Yeah, that's a rule too. The the 
you you can try and unfang them while they're while they still well, in hold, but if you can't, hold. yeah, you but gotta you separate them. You you break them, separate them. They have to face each other, face away from each other, right? You yep. unfang the dogs and, and you do it right in the mm. middle of the box. Yep, face now them face away from dogs. each other. When you, when you, you know exactly unfang them, fa face them together, and release them both at the same time. So that, yeah, you getting you getting a scratch, but not a full scratch. Yeah, if that right. helps answer your question. And again, that's to ensure that nobody would get an upper hand again. So mm -hmm. say, you know, if he was on the bottom, if you get put back on the bottom, that's where you were supposed to be, motherfucker. Right. You're not strong <laughs> enough right. to stay on top. Right. I got yeah. Not a, unfair to the other dog, you know. Yeah. Got a question it's pretty well school thought school. out, you know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, this, this, this is a, a funny question. How does it feel to have all this experience and all this information that you you probably most of it you probably gonna take to the grave and never tell nobody <laughs> some of it yeah uh say this i forgot a lot of it you know most most of the stuff i could comes off the top of my head but inside i'm kicking myself because i can't remember i'll forget names or certain things and that you know even breedings i could be able to go down a pit most famous dog pit and i could recite them three four five generations but a lot of it i forgot but a lot of it too i don't just some things I can't say, you know, I try and be honest. Right. And if it's something I can't say, I'll just say, I can't say it, you know, like, uh, could be anything, just pick something. But yeah, right. it's, there's a lot in no, there. Like People, who, who really stole goddamn the dog? Yeah. yeah who, like that. Who, who stole oh, 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 Pete General? Right. Yeah. You know, answer that publicly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or how dog was, was bred or. Yeah. Or, really or, bred. Or, yeah. yeah. Or, or some shit like that. Like that's deep yeah. shit. Like, you know, yeah, but that's just man time at that point. You honoring yeah. your word and not being Absolutely. messy. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, if exactly. you know yeah. somebody Absolutely. with the blood, you would tell them, you know, this is how you yeah. really bred, breed it like this. Yeah. But yeah, you I, ain't finna jump on here and say that shit. No. I wanted yeah. I wanted schoolboy's perspective on that because I can relate that in a degree of uh, like in my position, yeah. I know a lot of dirt about people, right? A yeah. lot of fucked up shit. Like yeah. And yeah. People, because I'm the type of person to keep my word and I don't blast people and put their shit out there, some of these same fucking people got the audacity to talk shit about me. And I'm like, dude, do you? I could fucking blow your shit yeah. up, bro. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But they'll yeah. do that. They'll still talk shit. They, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with them. Well, they're just they taking just, advantage they just, they, of you sticking yeah, to the man pole. Of you. That's all. Yeah. They know you ain't right. like that, so they're going to be yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, and exactly, with, me, with me, with people that, that trust me, you know, and a lot of people trust me, not just with dog stuff, with personal shit. They know from experience that I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say it. Some have told me, hey, I'm going to tell you, don't ever say this till I fucking die. That's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not going to say nothing. Other people just know me and they'll tell me something personal, stuff, whether it's the dogs or personal life. I ain't telling them. It's not my business to tell. It's they know, and that's why they tell me because they trust me and they know I'm not going to say nothing. So I take that shit real serious, you know. And hell and yeah, a lot of, that's a, that's honorable, you know. Yeah, yeah. a they lot, lot carry of times, a lot of weight. Yeah, a lot of times it, the sometimes people ain't so good, even though their dogs are good, you know. So I'm not going to run their dogs down just because the guy's an asshole, you know. The dogs are what they are; they don't know who their owner is, so the guy may be jerk but the dogs are good so i won't even do that you know i won't even yeah say them, yeah, them i'll never dogs take are... a dog accolades away from me yeah if no, the owner no. is a piece of shit i ain't gonna yeah. do that if, and if, yeah. if, if they real accolades, accolades if they fake accolades and i'm on your yeah. ass too you and yeah. the dog yeah. Yeah. And you, you know some yeah. somebody asked me one time some some fucking dude asked me one time you know you know why why do i interview schoolboy so much why do i have schoolboy on here so much right he was hating this shit, right? You know, I ain't gonna say his name, but I said, you know what, schoolboy, he he might tell you he don't fuck with somebody, but he never got a bad word to say about shit. He never got a bad word to say about nobody. Yeah, nah. the dude is such an OG. He's such a smooth ass player. He don't got nothing bad to say about nobody. He just say, oh yeah, that's not my cup of tea. I don't fuck with that person. But he never go into details. Oh, yeah, he did this. Fuck him. And nah. Never. Yeah, he, he got class, you know. Class. That shit that, carry a long the, way. And that's the, that, these times. Right. And that's the perfect word, class. A lot of these motherfucking dudes, man, 
talk to these motherfuckers. All they do is bash everybody, bash every fucking body. You're like, dude, what yeah. the fuck are you talking about? Like, oh yeah, this person ain't shit. Or this person ain't shit. Like, you the only fucking person in the world that ever did something dogs. Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. yeah. Again, the shit. focus is on the dogs, not on the shit talking. All the, all the shit talking does is make drama, and I ain't. I'm for fucking drama. You know, and I'm. I'm, man, I'm, I'm I don't even watch not, drama not, on TV. That's yeah, how yeah. anti dramatic I am. Yeah, I yeah. want my shit that, cut and dry, steak, steak sauce. God yeah. damn it, nothing fancy. That, yeah, that ain't why I'm here. You know, other people, that's the only kind of attention they'll get. And a lot of it has to do because they don't have any experience. They don't have any real life hands on where they've done this, done that, seen this, send, seen that, know people. You know, there's a lot of old timers, man. When I, when I get around them, you know, they make it a point of talking to me. Sometimes they pull me over to the side and sometimes this and that. And we just talk. They don't even want other people around. It's just they want to have their little one on one time with me because they respect me so much. And I respect them. And I knew them from back in the day, whether I went into them or whether I whether I, uh, uh, you know, had them at one of my shows or I went to one of their shows. You know, I didn't talk shit back in the day and I ain't going to do it now. Is Again, I'm not for the drama. You know, and I have haters too. I don't care. They're insignificant in, to me. You know, right. I just, I just don't. I don't even give them the time of day. You know, it's not. That's not what Shit, I do. I do. I wish the worst happened to them. <laughs> I hope they dogs get sick and die, and they can't help them. Yeah. But I hope they, they shit all over the place before they do. <laughs> yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. I'm that guy, you know. Yeah. Don't yeah. hate on me. I'm not hating on you. I don't hate yeah. on nobody. Yeah. If you yeah. hating on me, you a straight hater, and I hate your <laughs> fucking guts. <laughs> I hope you die sooner the show yeah. end. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You bitch. Yeah. <laughs> if you the op, yeah. you the op. If I fuck yeah. with you, I'll, I'll fuck with you. Your haters, I wish the same on them. I'm that friend, you know. And and then there's people like that, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we need more guys like me around, yeah. especially in these times we got, yeah. these trying yeah. times. Yeah. yeah as, long as, you, that, man. <laughs> as long as you, as long as you, you know, that's all I care about. You know, some, some people, you know, they mildly, some people are this way, that way. As long as they ain't liars, you know, I don't care. There's people that talk shit, you know, back in the day when they were handling dogs or they talk shit to people out there, as long as they follow the rules and they this and that, you yeah, hell, y'all love want. this shit talking yeah. handlers, man. They yeah, be the yeah. funniest and the yeah. best. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's why, I, yeah. I, I, like what Ram said, is the real shit. Like you said, motherfuckers take advantage of your manhood, you know what I mean? Your manhood rules that you live by. And, and like, because I be wondering, like, man, how the fuck can these people that I know so much dirt about, and they know I know, so I know shit about people that could ruin them, ruin their reputations. They know I know this, but they still yeah. openly talk shit about me because they know I'm not the type of motherfucker who gonna come out here and put their business because of how I live by my code. Yeah, and it's just it, it gets frustrating because sometimes I be wanting to just air a motherfucker out like, man, you old fucking rapist ass nigga, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, that's I'm, why I vent to you oh, man, like I vented earlier when we was behind the scenes, like motherfucker. Don't do that shit. You know, I ain't yeah. going to put you on blast on here or on, you know, the group page. But, nigga, you know better than that. Stop it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll you say You got to vent it, that shit sometime, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'll say this. that All that shit they do, it eventually catches up to them. It does. Right. It just, you, you, my grandpa used to say, you ain't going to leave this world without paying for your mistakes. And it don't matter if you're 80 years old or 20 years old. You're going to pay somewhere along the way. And a lot of them... Haters, that's what happens. They get exposed by someone else or people see how they really are and then they lose credibility. They, some of them fuckers, I don't even see them on Facebook no more. I don't hear about them. I don't. They do it to their self. So that's another thing I got in the back of my mind. I don't have to say shit. They'll fuck their self over. And they do. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, really they like do. I, I still like throwing them under the bus, though. I yeah, get yeah. No, it's, good. Fuck it's good to I'll vent. I'll do it for you. Know? you. Yeah. Bel <laughs> believe me, I go to my old lady after I'm done with some of these, listen to these fuckers, and I go tell her, you know, and she's, uh, she's good about she's good about listening, you know. Yeah. But, but, you know, but it's good. It's better it. just to get that shit out. That shit will turn into <laughs> yeah. something else. That's In right. The slightest infraction, you'll be going off on a motherfucker, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's always better to get it off, man. Fuck that yeah. shit. Tell somebody, my 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 friends. Sometimes they'll call me. Hey, schoolboy, I, I got a vent. Go ahead, I'm listening. I'm a good listener, man. 
I got people that they want personal information about marriages and, and girlfriends and money and all this and that. T talk to me. I'll listen. I'll give you my advice. Or yeah, I, hell sometimes yeah. they, just, they just want somebody to listen, somebody to talk to, which ain't their family or ain't someone. Yeah, somebody they know ain't going to tell. They been. Exactly. You exactly. know, I'm the hood psychiatrist too, so you know, I'm the secret keeper, so I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Everybody sure. dumped their shit on me, but yeah. I got a different perspective on how to deal with shit, so, right, you know, right. I'm a good person to get real advice from. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and, got, and, I, and I fuck with Ram Heavy because Ram is honest. Yeah. He, he's, he's the type of dude that you want as a friend because... Straight up. Straight yeah, up. Ram, Ram will tell you, even if, you, if, if it's not some shit you want to hear, he'll tell you, you know what I'm saying? And that, yeah. that, that's that's invaluable to have around yeah. you somebody yeah. who will do that for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, one I'm, of the rules. I'm, I'm that way up, in, in private. Yeah. You know, I, in my I, neighborhood, I that was you know you gotta fucking stand on your shit, bro. Right or wrong, I'll ride with you if you're wrong, but I'm gonna tell you you still wrong. You know, for real. Yeah, right. Right. So yeah. Plus, so, you know, we gotta hold each other accountable as men. I don't yeah. want to see you out there failing. You know, I ain't gonna yes man you if I know. Robbing that bank is going to get you taken away from your family. All your homies around you could be like, yeah, we could do it and pull it off and plan it out. I'm going to be like, hell no. You got a grandkid. You too old to be out there. Seven, eight. What the fuck you doing, homie? Right, <laughs> right. Tripping. Yeah. But I expect y'all to do that to me, too, because I ain't perfect. Sometimes I get to tripping. You know, one yeah. gets drilling shit and all that. You feel me? Yeah. It can happen so, to the best of us, bro. Yeah, <laughs> so we all hold each other accountable. That's how we move forward just as men. Fuck dog men and dog talking all that. Just grown man time, you know? Yeah. Be a fucking so those man. Of, those of you that got outside kids, I ain't telling. Don't worry. I ain't telling. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, just tell your lady. Trust me, it worked out better. When I just started saying, fuck this player shit, I'm just telling the truth. You're going to yeah. fuck with her, you're going to fuck off. I yeah. live like a king now. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. You like, I said, like, I said before, like I said before, tell the truth but, even if it gets you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. but I ain't going to tell it. You know, that's yeah. your truth to tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. None of my business. I don't get it between people. Uh, Relationships. Whoever like girl asks me, what, who got outside key? I don't know. I don't even know who no. you're talking about, lady. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Me. I was just capping. Yeah, you know niggas online be lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I always tell him. I say, you know, motherfucker be lying. Can't believe nobody on the internet. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's what it is, though, man. You know, it's this a it's a good good situation, man. I want to say before we end the show because we've been on here cooking good for three hours, shit. Yeah, man. But yeah, I I, I want to say the school boy, I appreciate you, man. You a solid dude, man. You always uh come through. You're not you know you you're not afraid or unwilling to share. The knowledge to the next generation and help people out, man, and get that game out, man. And uh, like I said, Ram is a dude who I value as a friend because Ram has helped me in uh, a lot of private situations. He don't even know how much he helped me in a lot of situations. You know what I mean? Uh, just just being honest with me about certain things because you need that. Because I got a lot of people around who, me who, you know, they want to be a part of my situation so they kiss my ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, Ram is the type of dude who he gonna tell you what you need to hear, so I salute him for that. And uh, you know, of course, right on. On the flip side, though, you helped me too with shit I didn't know. Like with the QuickBooks when I first started my business, like that yeah. shit helped me a fucking lot, bro. Like I do payroll with the shit now, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah you yeah. know, that's what we are here for. You know, Absolutely. if I can help you, salute. If you can help me, salute. We gonna move forward. One of us gonna be a millionaire. For sure, for sure. Look, and show the other one how to get it. <laughs> exactly. I was just going to say the same thing. You know what I mean? And, and, and my boy Thompson Kendall's, man, I've been fucking with Thompson since, since I got, since I, my first discovered Thompson page, I was so impressed by his yard, how clean it was, and how well his dogs was kept, and the way he represented the breed. You know, he had a lot of haters. Motherfuckers hating on Thompson. I, I seen motherfuckers on other forums outside of YouTube hating on Thompson. I'm like, what the hell you gonna do for? Y'all don't get it. Like he 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 doing his thing. He's showing the breed in a positive light. He's working his dogs. Well, I don't get with the hate. Thompson has been uh, a real solid dude, man. He always take care of his hounds. He about his bit. Thompson do more walking than talking. That's what I like about him. A lot of people talk a lot of shit. Thompson is the type of dude who will just pop up tomorrow and be like, "Yeah, y'all just got uh 120 acres uh, out in Atlanta." 
uh, uh, yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? You ain't tell nobody about this? No, nah, uh, I said it in the video. I was getting some acres three months ago, and it's right. like, God damn, you did say that. I like that though. Do what yeah. you say you're gonna do, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people talk shit, Thompson walk shit, you know what I'm saying? He makes yeah. it happen. That's why I fuck with Thompson, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know I, mean? I was just on him about that the other day. Like, the fence up, I was like, God damn. Bam, Billy Mays looking ass. You just said two yeah. days ago you was putting up a fence. Yeah, Most motherfuckers yeah, Thompson, bullshit to, around. If put that shit up the next weekend, so hell yeah. You're going you you to have to put together a barbecue or sometimes. So yeah, and they yeah. like, that's the young homie on the panel, and he, you know, doing grown man shit, so hell yeah. Yeah, yeah we got that, a solid crew. Yeah, man, you I just know, appreciate we fuck the yeah, oh, I appreciate it, 70. I appreciate it, Rem, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Mr. Garcia, man. Like, I ain't gonna lie, man. Just soaking up the knowledge and being able to even be a part of this conversation and the knowledge being passed. You talked about you forgot a lot of shit, but man, goddamn, just the, the three hours I sat here and was a part of this conversation with you, man, you sp spit out a goddamn book of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, thank you. I just fuck. Yeah, I just fucking appreciate and it and soaking up. I just want to say I respect everybody. You guys are solid dudes in my book. And uh, like I always say, I'm here to help, man. It's, it's, uh, yes. And the other solid motherfuckers in the chat listening, just get with other solid motherfuckers in your area, bro. Yeah. Telling you, You'll it's be way better. better. Off. You'll be Hell better yeah. off in the long run, man. You save yourself a lot of heartache, a lot of headache, a lot of drama, a lot of bullshit you don't need. You'll learn as you go. You know, If you're a man, you'll learn it as you go and you'll do the right thing. If not, then you never was going to do the right thing anyways. You know? And you never was a man, so sit down yeah. when you pee and fucking wipe yeah. back to front. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's that's why I have Thompson. He says the shit that I'm thinking that, about. But, yeah, but that I'm, was me. Yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah. people fuck I mean, with uh, shit like I mean, that. I mean, yeah. Ram. Ram, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I'll say it. Like, yeah. I'll be respectful with it. I ain't Debo or nothing, but yeah. I'm going to tell you <laughs> what it is, good or bad. If you're on the bullshit, you're going to hear it. But when you do good, I'm going to salute you. You yeah. know? You can't Hell see it, yeah. but I got, I got a thumbs up down here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, before we close it, though, man, anybody trying to register their dogs, Cool boy lives, man. I'm telling you, for real. Mm -hmm. A couple cats didn't hit him up, and they hit me back and told me good looking. I don't remember who said it, but salute to that for even shopping yeah. with the OG. I'm, That's I'm, a real I'm, good look. I'm sending my. I'm finna do a register my shit with school boy. Only thing taking me so long is I'm trying to find uh my boy Mayday uh Lord Mayday's uh ADBA paperwork because my stupid ass forgot the exact day he was born. I'm finna yeah. find the paperwork and then I'm gonna uh, send it off. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. And and talking about helping, you know, I'll, I'll say this. Every time we do a we do this, I get at least run registration. Um, you know, it, it helps me too. And yeah, but you know, that shit is solid though. You should be getting yeah. tens of thousands of them holes coming in. Yeah, you I, know, that yeah, shit is get, is real legit. Lot, no cap. A, yeah, I get a lot more than than I used to. And people like the way I run it. You know, it's it's if you want to call it secret like that, it, it, it it's true. But it's more. Private. It's private. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's that's personal. why I love it. It's private. Don't, yeah, don't like he don't even know out. what your shit is, yeah. and he run yeah, the I motherfucker. Don't. You know, yeah. you gotta send yeah. him your number in to, to verify yeah. the shit. Exactly. It don't get no more really than that. It's all on you. You know. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. even uh, my my database. You know, if anyone wants to start a registry, most of the time what they do is they go out and they buy a database, right? I didn't do that. I'm building my own. I'm making my own. So whatever yeah, exactly. it is, and I I don't know every single dog and all that, but they're on file. As long as you have a registration number, I can look it up that way. All your personal info is not in there. I don't keep it. I have, you know, I'll send people, uh, you know, forms to fill out. They fill them out, send it back to me, pay me. I do the registration. Everything's clean and clear and done. I send them back to the people and that information that you sent me, I dump it. I'd get rid of it. Any phone number, address. You don't name. get more really than that, man. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. School boy, yeah. how, how, how often do you do uh, shows? Not often. Because of COVID, we, we, we kind of stopped. And, you know, the, the thing with shows is they're very expensive. Hey, no, and no, that, no. That's, that's why I was going to ask you. Don't worry about yeah. that. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, you're around some gangsters now. You ain't got to worry about yeah. no money. 
yeah, we're, yeah, we're but, gonna get some shows cracking once this COVID shit's yeah, over with. Yeah, yeah, just uh, we I used to do you know a few a year. You know, uh, I did some in California, did some in Michigan, you know, Arizona. Uh, I've even you know judged for yeah. other. Yeah, like so school, I did boy, he judged a couple of my shows in the confirmation show, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, schoolboy pop up. So yeah, we get the yeah. shows back cracking, man. Uh, I like yeah. doing that shit. It's actually yeah. fun. Yeah, it's fun. Get together, and I've done them in, you know, all uh, different places in the U.S., all over Mexico, Europe, Honduras, Panama, a couple of times. You know, it's fun. I like it. Yeah, I want. I want to. Uh, I want to look into that. I want to. See what we can do with that, because uh, I even do. I've done seminars too. You know, there's Q right. Q and A and all kinds uh, of shit. Whatever. Yeah, that's big. Whatever you want to do, I'm down for it. You know, tell them the name of your registry, schoolboy, for the dog. ICDR, dogs. ICDR, International Coalition Dog Registry. That was actually a name that Rocket came up with. You know, that's yeah, that's his, cold. That's his input. Yeah. Yeah, so and it's, it's all hard. like legit dog men who who oversee that shit. That's so it. that's it. That's Which what makes it official. Yeah, yeah. Well, look here, I, from, I, I want I want to get with some shows because I got a little bitch, man. See, my boys, they they are you know, they are they they they, they made their dogs, so they they not confirmationally, you know, the greatest, but they some big motherfucking monsters. But I got a bitch, the stone wall on top, heavy stone wall on top. And Jeep on the bottom. This bitch is built like a motherfucking. I mean, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's just yeah. fucking. This that's, bitch. That's. I, uh, got, I, I gotta show her. I got to. Yeah, that's something that's different in mine too. Everybody has a, a confirmation standard. I think I may even have one. I, I gotta look it up. But but I don't follow anybody's standard, and that's one of the problems with confirmation. A dog should be judged on symmetry and proportion. Yeah. And as long as your dog is even, kind of even all the way around, it don't matter how it's built. And the concept behind that is because they're performance animals, they're working dogs. So they all different. They all built different. They all look different. If your dog's in decent shape and he's proportioned and he's symmetrical, you know, he can win. I don't care if he's short and squatty or long and right. tall, thin, like that. That's the way... It, it, I feel it should be. Yeah, because if it you should have a, be. If you have a confirmation confirmation standard where all the dogs look the same, now you ending up like like other breeds of dogs. You're gonna lose yeah. that performance. You're gonna lose exactly. that exactly. Yeah. in the building. Now you know you get like me. I'm picky with the confirmation, but that's years and years and years of just you know developing what I like. What I like, yeah. you might not like. You know, it's short right. squatty dogs that are getting yeah. a run for the money. I don't yeah, like even, them because I uh, like, you know, a head dog who more rangy and a short squatty right. dog usually lose to right. that, you know, right. just because he <laughs> uses range Look, and his and talents. The, yeah. And that's, and that's okay. why I like it. Yeah, and exactly. That's okay because, because even the judges, you know, other, other registries, you got to take a test and you got to go through this and that. I don't do that. If you're a solid dog, man, you're, you're an experienced dog, man, you can judge for me. And I've had all kinds of people judge for me and all of them had experience. And everybody has their likes. So depending on what judge you got, he's going to pick whatever he likes. As long as the dogs are proportioned and symmetrical, everybody has their likes and dislikes. And Exactly. That's just, that's but as long as it, it works, it works. You know? It work. Man, I mean, it's, it's like, a reason it's people like, uh, still breeding shorty cowboy dogs inbred. They don't care about the bow legs. The shit is working. Right. Yeah, right. I just exactly. wouldn't get one. That's not my style yeah. of dog. But... Yeah. And it's I've had working. I've had I've had people that that they never judge before, and I ask them to judge, and they say, "Well, well, how do I judge?" I say, "You judge a dog just the same way you would look at a dog stepping over that wall. If you like that kind of dog, if that's you know he's in decent shape, and that's the way he looks, you know what a good dog looks like. You know what a good you know a, a, a dog in shape looks like. Use your own experience, and whatever you pick, that's what you pick." Sure. You know, that's yeah. the way it yeah. should be, in my opinion. Hell yeah! Because you, you that, could do a morning show and have one judge and win that, and stay for the afternoon show with a different judge and play second. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. It, it's a, I'm telling you, bro. It, it's I like this little honey bitch, man. The way she she's little, bro. Compare I, I'm comparing her to my all my other dogs is uh 45 plus pounds. Like Lord Mayday is. 52 pounds. Doc is probably around 
58 right now. Right now. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then um, Sonia is about 45, 46 pounds. And this little bitch is 30 pounds, bro. But the way she structured is fucking unbelievable, man. I be just look like Bruce Lee already. Man, I, I be looking at her. I be just amazed. Like, what the fuck? Just beautiful confirmation. The way she built, man. Just a beautiful little bitch. She just yeah. feel my nerves. She's too hyper. Yeah, she let me yeah. so. Hey, right, M line, get out of here with that shit. <laughs> it, it, I still go to the barbecues and eat other shit than the barbecue. He right though. That's my homeboy. That's my young partner, yeah. M line. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been, I've been peeping in line. Y'all got some shit over there, y'all stash and y'all hiding. Yeah, hiding. that's why young partner, man. I love that yeah. dude right there. Got, been knowing yeah. him since he was young, young, young. You know, yeah, and he always been the same. That's one dude I would get a dog from. You know. Yeah, what that Django do? What that Django? Yeah, exactly. What that yeah. Django? You know, man. that's that Django. But yeah. yeah, that's my whole boy. You right? I don't eat barbecue. I don't like that shit. You feel me? But I still come to the cookouts though and eat the other shit. They don't leave that part out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, 78, yeah. if you like her, someone else is going to like her too. You know, yeah, I like that little bitch, man. She, she nice, you know, man. You get, yeah, you get uh, a judge who sees, you know, her qualities, they'll pick her, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lot of the takes a lot of the politics out of it and the one-sidedness and all that shit, you know, the the – the judge ain't supposed to know how dogs are bred. You know, you ain't supposed to go up and ask them and, and all that stuff. You're supposed to be neutral. So if you're just judging on the dogs, you know, I've even had people come up to me and say, you know, how can, how can you pick my dog third or you didn't give him this and that? And I ask them, well, which one's your dog? Well, you know, I was right. in their hand. I ain't looking at you. I don't know who right. or what dog. I ain't paying attention to you. I'm paying attention to the dog. And they'll mm -hmm. bring the dog over and I'll tell them because of this, that, this, that. You know, it could be something real slight. You ain't got no teeth. Could be some your your tails crooked up over your back or uh, you wasn't like sucked you know? in enough. The other yeah, dog yeah, was yeah. sucked in enough. Exactly. You know, be the slightest exactly. shit. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, them <laughs> girls, them girls be getting on it. They'll condition their fucking dog. And they'll bring them in, and these old guy conditioners and all that. They they don't do that. They just bring them how they are over off the chain, you know. And the girl win yep. best condition. She may never have been in the box her whole fucking life but her dog's in good shape and she deserves it you know and, gr and girls she came that out way. with the titties <laughs> out too so <laughs> yeah, we was yeah. looking at her i ain't yeah. looking at no dirty dick dusty yeah. dicky wearing yeah. motherfucker but, handling hey, the dog i'm yeah. looking at the it's, dog it's you funny you say that. that's why that's yeah. why people be people people be yeah. sending their girls in there to show the dogs yeah. well it, it's funny you say that ram because one girl like that and, and i looked at her dog like three times you know and my wife was there she goes I know why you went over there and looked at that dog. <laughs> oh, hey, you wasn't number six, no dog. bring you your dog up again. Girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. That motherfucker you got the hat low so you can't see where your eyes really at. Yeah. All those yeah. things, it's grande. Yeah, yeah. Look at a little life real. Look at a little yeah. life real. What can I say? I, I'm a, what can I say? I'm a man. I'm human, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with being a healthy heterosexual male. You mm -hmm. supposed to look at titties. Yeah. 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 Life real say you making me jealous, 78, making me want a dog again. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. This nigga uh, over there with a dog of the year looking ass. Get yeah, out of here. It's gone, man. Listen, see, see, when <laughs> I say people be in the chat that you don't even know, right, you right. know. Yeah, Literally exactly. a dog of the year, motherfucker. That's right. That's why I be telling motherfucker. When I be talking that shit about people in the chat, talking about this nigga here, talking about you want somebody want a dog again. This motherfucker got some fire over there. He got some but fire. Dog of the year, literally. No cap. <laughs> it ain't even being funny. Get out of here yeah. with this shit, man. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, you Crazy. send me all of your yard, and then I send you a dog back, bro. And I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that deal. Uh, it'll be yeah. both of them. It'll be like both of ours, but I just keep it in my house. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. But uh, thank you. But yeah, I, uh, hey Thompson, man, what you got? Uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot, bro. Uh, when you gonna do uh, Feely to uh, uh, uh to Yellow? You gonna read? You gonna you gonna read read that up, or you gonna just uh, you ain't gonna do no repeat? I don't. You know what I mean? I don't be repeating shit, but yeah. I don't know. It depends. Well, it depends well, what the I future you, holds, man. I tell you what, man. Whoever you sold them dogs to, cause I fucked up. That's my fault. 
But whoever you sold the dogs to, right? If they got a bitch, see if they got a bitch, man, that they want to let go. Just to see if they just, you know, <laughs> they, they, they have some money problems, the car broke down or whatever. Tell them, I, I got a little, I got like three stacks for them. If they want to let a bitch go, because now I ain't, got, <laughs> I, ain't got, I ain't got to raise no puppy. I can just take the bitch, put her out there, and, and she ready to go. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Tell them I got three, got, got three stacks for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now, I'm Andre them. 3000. Yeah, I'm hey, Bam Bam that. Tweet, uh, yeah. it's better to wait for an old school like around November when people start, you know, looking at their shit because they need Christmas money. But right now, they taxing for shit that ain't even fucking 40% put together. But yeah, look on offer up in Craigslist if you just don't want to wait that long to get an old school. But I wouldn't buy one right now because it's a fucking seller's market. Everybody want one. I was going to do a low rider build, but I couldn't find, you know, I want either a Monte Carlo LS or a goddamn uh, old school like 83 Cadillac coupe. I was going to switch up, you know, and all the ones I seen, they want way too much for the shit still need a lot of work before I even put the switches on there. So I'm going to just wait till it get closer to Christmas and hit somebody over the head for the low. I'm about, I'm about to, I'm about to sell my, um, I'm going to get it. I'm probably going to get it, uh, Detail first, but I'm finna sell my uh M5, man. Oh, I thought you was gonna say the Bentley. I was finna say you crazy. <laughs> no, you talking about the uh, oh the Rose? I ain't got no Bentley. Or the Rose? I mean, yeah, the Rose. No, no, I'm I'm stashing that Rose. I got my M5 BMW M5. It's a 2000 M5. It's 21 years old in mint condition. Ain't no rust on that motherfucker. Only got 98,000 miles on it. Anybody want it? Let me know. You know what I'm saying? Put that motherfucker on the trailer for you. Ship it down there, you know what I'm saying, for the low low. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up in my inbox. Uh, you know what I mean? I just I'm gonna probably detail it and shit like that. Get it nice and shiny for you. But I gotta get that motherfucker out of my way. Cause Wisconsin, I can't do nothing with that car, bro. Every time it snow, I gotta just put it up because this motherfucker can't do shit in the snow. It just spin around and shit like I'm a fucking idiot and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Speaking but, of uh, car, uh Ram, what what was your first car? Uh 83 Caddy. Oh shit! Mine was a yeah. '66 Chevy. Yeah, I had the old school '83 uh, Brome, the Fodo, big boy. Yeah, yeah that was uh, my dad. Yeah. He loved Cadillacs, man. He had three or four of them. Yeah, well, I was always in the low riders before I was in the drag racing. So you mm. know, I was gonna make that my first low rider. I had a couple good dope low riders though. I wish I had kept my six deuce. That was back in the day when they was easier to find. If I'd have known, you know. Fast forward to now, them bitches damn near impossible to find for a good price. I just kept it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a clean six yeah. deuce Impala, uh, 16 pumps, dumps, uh, eight switches, you know, eight yeah. solenoids, all that good old shit. Yeah, yeah I, I was real big in the low ride. That shit costs more than street racing, though, because some always break from hopping that bitch. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm telling you, I, I fuck with them Escalades now, man. Now that I, when I, when I, when I bought me an Escalade, I can't, I don't feel right in no car no more, man. Now that I've been sitting up high and shit, feeling like the king of the world, I don't yeah. feel, I don't feel right in no, when I get in the BMW, bro, that shit feel weak as fuck to me now. And the BMW used to be, I thought that motherfucker was the shit at first, bro, until that yeah. motherfucker dusted me in that uh, 96 Impala, 90, that 94 Impala SS. Yeah, that super smoked, sport got on your ass. Yeah, he smoked my ass, bro. <laughs> oh, he miracle. Me. Who put that American muscle on your helmet? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. That shit pissed me off too. But you know what I mean. But my BMW, that motherfucker, still mint condition, bro. It just need to be detailed and shit, you know, polished stuff and shit on the outside. But man, ain't nothing wrong with that motherfucker, bro. Yeah, I used to race an Escalade, so you know they all wheel drive and the one you got got a, already a six point four in there. That's a big engine, even if you ain't using it to race. So. No, I put a big old turbo on mine. I was whooping ass in that motherfucker. And I just kept, yeah, I just kept blowing out the front end differential. Like I put a big old uh, ninety millimeter turbo on it. That shit was like twelve hundred, a little bit over twelve hundred horsepower. You know, Ooh, fuck shit. that yeah. shit, man. I ain't fucking yeah, around, yeah. man. I'm in. I'm in the pickups. I, I get. I usually get a pickup. I got a 2016 Silverado. I had a '68 Chevy with a. Originally came with a 327. Yeah, my dad, my dad swapped it out for a 350, but I think the 327 had more power. I think the head, yeah, it do because it's a stroker motor. I got a 327 right now, my partner just gave me. 
My and boy. it's already a stroker. Yeah, I'm just going to rebuild it. And I ain't no Chevy guy, but I might put it in a low rider when I do get one because Dodge my don't boy. make no low rider looking cars. <laughs> my boy yeah. my boy got a Silverado, right? He, 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 this is my boy. I, I, I go fishing with him sometimes and hunting and shit. He, he go hunt, he hunt raccoons, squirrels, all that shit, right? He be hunting fucking wild boar, wolves, everything. But like, he, uh, he, he kind of, I don't really fuck with him too. He my boy, but I don't fuck with him by myself because he's crazy. I got to have yeah. some backup with him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this, yeah. this motherfucker a little nut. Like, he put me out of his car one time because he got a Silverado and I'm in the passenger seat and I said, man, why you didn't get the uh, F-150 or F-250? Man, nigga, this motherfucker maybe get out of his car. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> made, and he was serious. Yeah. I thought yeah. he was playing. All right, man, yeah. He's like, man, get out of my car, man. Are you talking that Ford shit? The fuck out my car. Like, bro, you sit, nigga. I went for the fight. I'm like, bro, you serious? You finna put me out your car, bro? Uh, he on some gang shit. Well, I say more bar no car, but I still do got an '86 money Carlo with a 454 in it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't taking a, it that uh, far. I had a Chevy SS with a 454. I forget what year, '80 something. Uh. A Dodge, I had Dodge 318. I've had everything. Grand Torino. Uh, yeah, Rome, I always wanted L- one of them LPDs. big old GTs, the most cool yeah, Grand yeah. Torinos, man. Yeah, yeah, they could get it back then. I could spin the tires on it. I think yeah. it had a 351 in it or something. I forget. What yeah, you, that's what. What, yeah, what you pushing over there, Thompson? What you pushing over there, man? I ain't talking about the family vehicle. Shit. What you pushing over there? What you uh, got? What's your man car? I ain't got no fucking man car, man. Shit. I ain't never uh, been a car dude, man. Shit. I used to push hoop these and shit all around and shit, man. Hey, uh, hey, Thompson, like, <laughs> hey, 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 like, fuck it, man. My shit is my dogs, man. Uh, yeah. As long yeah, as the motherfucker start in the AC work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, hey, you know, yeah, man. You know shit. what? My, my, my Cadillac was in the, it was in the, uh, my Escalade was in the uh, shop this last week, right? And uh, I was going to get a rental. And, um, uh, all they had available was the minivan. So my wife was like, you going to get the minivan? Uh, just to, I'm like, nah, fuck that. So I fucking stayed in the house all week until my shit got to the shop. My wife was like, you'd rather stay in the house than get a minivan? Yes. I would. I, I, I can't be seen. I can't be riding around in no goddamn minivan. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I can't do it because if, once I get a minivan, that's 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 a tap out. That's when you yeah. The yeah, pimping yeah. is over. You yeah, talk yeah. to dad, Chad. Yeah. Now yeah. it's over. That's, that's a wrap. Andy. You full fledged granddad when you get the minivan. Yeah, yeah. it's over. Yeah, you yeah. might as well go on and get re- ready to retire. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my daughter. They they all Mercedes. All Mercedes. C class or whatever. M class. Yeah, it's expensive get... tastes. Yeah. yeah. Well, she she. I brag on her a little bit. She's a full time teacher, full time student. She jumps oh, out of yeah. airplane. She jumps yeah, out of airplane. Should be, run, yeah, run, being you know, rolled up. Run marathons, all kinds yeah, of shit. Living life. Yeah, I like yeah. the skydive too, though. That's one thing a lot of people don't know. I be skydiving and not the tandem. I didn't jump enough to where I could jump by myself, you know? Yeah. Man, hey, I like that oh, shit. How would you hey, jump out of a perfectly hey. good airplane? What the no. fuck? Hey, For hey, the hey, <laughs> I'm no, really hey, adrenaline I did that shit. I, I jumped out of an airplane and a helicopter before in a ROTC. I used to do ROTC uh, back when uh, you know my father in the military and shit. Yeah. So, so our high school, we automatically had to go to ROTC and shit uh, yeah. over in Germany and shit. Right, man. They had us doing man, man. And I'm a. I was always a big dude. I was always bigger than everybody my age. Man, I could do push ups. My folks be like, man. How you, how you that big doing them push-ups and shit? Like, man, I ain't got these big old titties for nothing. Motherfucker, I do push-ups. I do push-ups, man. I, my pops had us doing push-ups for punishment, for praise, for everything. We had to do push-ups. I could push my weight easy work. <laughs> oh, good job. You got on the roll. Best student yeah. of the year, valedictorian. Give me yeah. 20. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Give me 50 push-ups. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To celebrate. That's how, that's how it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the only thing I jump out of or jump off of was a house. That's it. I ain't going. I'm, I'm not one. Of, I ain't crazy, man. That, you know, see, I, I jump off an airplane, but I'm yet to jump off a roof. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least I I'm got about, a parachute. I'm, now, cause no, I know how to land. Yeah. My big yeah, ass jump off a roof. I've been and broke my ankle or something. No, nah, no, nah, don't. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Don't jump off a roof. I almost broke my fucking legs, man. So. 
Yeah. Why'd I do it? Just to see what it was like. But I did see, it once. That was enough. Yeah. Uh, you, you like I've me? I got to test it first. Like yeah, when I got the yeah. shock collars, I would put it in my hand and turn it all the way up and shock myself so I could yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I see got my, my dog, uh, my old dog I used to have named Bubba. That motherfucker was on. He, he stayed in the. Um, when, once I sold him to my boy, uh, well, not really sold him, but gave him to my boy. My boy, he was a, he was in the duplex, so he stayed upstairs. Bubba was on the back porch in the old hood houses, the back porch balcony. Man, he saw a dog and jumped off the back porch, jumped off that motherfucker. Didn't break nothing when it got that motherfucker, bro. Crazy, crazy as fuck, crazy as dog, man. Yeah, yeah, they do that. They don't. They ain't thinking about shit. They're gonna go after something. They're gonna go after it. You know. Mm-hmm. Just the way they yeah, are. that shit used to happen in Brooklyn all the time with those brownstones, man. If them people, when them people used to have them dogs in the apartments, and they see them, they'll jump right out of the second story brownstone window, man. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. We're gonna get up out of here, though. Hey, Ram, man. Go ahead, and give us a disclaimer. Hey, man. It was a good cook. It's always a pleasure, man. Chopping it up with y'all boys, man, and everybody in the chat. Salute to everybody that came through. None of this shit is intended for or should be used for any illegal purposes. If you're still out there, you don't do it. That's on you. I say this shit every fucking week. Don't do it. Motherfuckers still do it. If you're out there in a game like that, don't keep the dogs with the rest of whatever else you got on, man, because you're bringing heat to people who don't need heat brought, and that's the whole breed as a whole. So if you're doing dogs and Whatever it else you're doing, keep them separated because when they come for whatever else you're doing, it's going to say the dogs first. You're bringing more heat to us for no reason. You feel me? Be careful out there. It's the weekend, man. Enjoy that shit. Turn up. If you like me, you know you finna go. You got two of them lined up for you, waiting on you to finish this here show. You feel me? But if you're not like me, just enjoy your Friday night, man. You still, you know, do what you do. Other than that, man, everybody be safe. Watch your surroundings, man. Don't get caught up and don't be on no bullshit because everybody ain't playing. Y'all be good. Yes, Peace. sir. Peace. Salute to my brother. Uh, exactly. I am true. Much love. I am true. Will in the super chat. Appreciate you, bro. Hey, salute, gentlemen. The dog pound. Yes, indeed, fam. Salute. All right, y'all. We'll, we'll catch y'all next Friday, man. Uh, 8.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, we'll get with y'all in a minute, man. We'll fight here. Deuce. Peace. Salute.